Hey y'all, TGIF, it's Friday. How are you all doing? I hope you are having an amazing day and you're ready to relax and enjoy your weekends, depending on how your scheduling is, because some of us don't even know the difference between a weekend and a weekday. And some of us are like, oh my God, is the weekend here yet? Because we need that to demarcate right? Create that like contrast between the work and the play. But really, isn't it all, all the same? We really should be doing what we love and working in a field that makes us joyful, happy, playful, right? So, you know, you need to be in your ridiculously authentic self. Hello! And I am. I'm in my kitchen. I've got some booch going on. I've got the kimchi going on. I'm going to share some interesting stuff. I have the dehydrated back there. I got lots of goodies in my arsenal. This is my alchemist love lab. Right? It's all about turning it all into gold. Oh, it's all about embracing what you have at your disposal. What can you make with all these goodies? What is it that you do in your kitchen? If you're just tuning in for the first time, spread some love on that share button because you never know who might need a little bit of culturing in their life. Let's get cultured, let's ferment, let's dehydrate. What is it we can do? This is my kombucha, this is coffee kombucha. I just did this last night. I got seven bottles out of my kombucha. I'm excited about that. So spread the love on the share button Hit notifications and make sure you see first when we go live and in the comments. Who, where are you tuning in from? Tell me what your fitness hold in your health goals, maybe your visionary goals. What is it you see for yourself that you want to create in this life? Maybe it's to enjoy some of my coffee kombucha one day. You never know. Love, love, love. Thank you, Philip, for sharing. I truly appreciate you for that. Hey, and if you know any groups, any fermentation groups, any dehydration groups, any culturing kimchi, throw this video in those groups if you belong to those kinds of groups because you never know. Maybe, maybe I'll share some wisdom that they need or maybe it'll just inspire, period. So, hi from Hungary, that's awesome. I've been to Budapest. I've been to Ballot, Lake Balaton, where a friend of mine has um, this castle. It's very cool. So today we've got all sorts of goodies. Okay, did I show you the booch? Did you get a good look at the booch? It's coffee kombucha, coffee kombucha. Café, un café, un café kombucha. Un kombucha, una kombucha, fatto con café. Allora. Anche posso parlare un po' in italiano, se non capisci, non c'è problema, non c'è problema. If you don't understand, it's all good. I just enjoy speaking Italian every once in a while when I get a chance. So this right here, this Chameleon Cold Brew Organic Pecan Coffee is what I used last night. This is like the bomb diggity. And you know what's funny? Still smells good. Can you smell? Oh man, you don't got smell of vision. I got, we got to work on that. Technology is improving. And it's cray cray out there. Hey, virtual reality is a reality rat. I mean, there's stuff you can do that you never thought was possible. If you can think it, you can believe it, you can achieve it. Aw, <laughs> I, I'm a little cray cray with the side of cray cray, but it's a love cray cray. And I love my cray cray. You gotta love your own cray cray. If you don't love your own cray cray, how do you expect the other cray crays to find you? Because your vibe attracts your tribe. Although, you know what, it's not really about a tribe. It's about just just uniting with everyone, one, one another. If we all get on that same cray cray vibe, then we'll all be having fun, right? Mmm. <sighs> Tasty. Ooh, speaking of which, that just made me think of something. So I have a couple things going on. I got lots of things going on in my kitchen. First off, I'm going to share my tea. This is Yogi T. Hey Yogi. Hey Yogi. That was one of my favorite shows as a kid was 
Yogi Bear. Hey, Yogi. So my dad kind of jokes with me now. He calls me, hey, Yogi, because I do yoga. <laughs> Look at the love mug, y'all. You know I'm all about the love. And this is a yogi tea. Hmm. Tasty, tasty. This is for opening up your sinuses. Hmm. My cough has finally subsided a lot more. <clears throat> As, if anything, I've been more dehydrated. Hi, Flora. How are you doing, darling? I'm drinking a whole lot more water because you need to be hydrating. Make sure you're hydrating. I just keep it in a glass jar because I know that sometimes I'll like, I'll, uh, I've broken glass jars before. Mmm. Hey Cheryl. Thanks for joining. Hi Glenda. Hi everyone who's tuning in for the first time. Make sure you hit the share button. Share into groups. We're going to go over some kombucha. We're going to, and the coffee kombucha, I'm going to pull out of the refrigerator. Um, I'm going to go over the situation I'm having with this other bottle of kimchi. You see the white stuff? Don't be scared. I'm going to share some info on this. It's not a bad thing. It just means it got too much air and it ain't going to kill you. It's just an overgrowth of yeast. And these things happen. So these are things that, you know, maybe there are groups out there that you know of, kombucha, fermentation, dehydration. I've also got last night's kombucha SCOBY fruit leather going on in the corner over here. This is something special. And I bet there's a lot of people don't know you can do it, let alone ever had tried it, having had tried it. So truly, that was my little gift was that, um, I've been wanting to do it for a long time. And I did it before Christmas. I made up this fruit leather using the SCOBY from a previous batch. Hi, Colleen. I see you. I love you. Thank you for sharing your beautiful video today. I want to let you know that truly touched my heart. And I am so grateful that you're with us in this beautiful, ridiculously authentic group. And uh, you, you know you're going to do great things. And I, I trust in that. So, continuing on, so hugs and kisses to all my rock and rad stars out there, rock and rad stars, sisters and bro, brothers, brothers, bro stars. So we got sis stars and bro stars, and I love you all. So here we're going to go. Where shall I begin? Do you want to see this? Tell you what. You got to write in the comments what your health and fitness goals are and what your desires are you want to achieve in this life. And I want to see hashtag hmm, Funky Friday. Let's go with Funky Friday. And I want to see who wants to see me show the scoby jerky leather first or do you want to see the kombucha first? Because I'm going to pull out one of my other kombuchas that I can drink. I made a chocolate one, chocolate coffee. So it's got chocolate and coffee in it. <laughs> Mwah. Love, love, love you. I'm not seeing anything. Both. <laughs> Wait, it's a juggling act. I gotta do this because I gotta open up the fridge and grab that over there. And <clears throat> I can. I am creative though. I could probably do both. I'm gonna do both. Just which one do you want to see first? Hashtag kombucha roll-up because you know what these are like fruit roll-ups but better and they're healthy for you because they still got the pro probiotics right okay Cheryl gets it we're doing the leathers first I really want to heat up my water to heat up my tea again too and this is a tea blend so when I make my kombucha sometimes I also make like this is just the bottle but I put together like an, an herbal tea right after I do it I say herbal, it has some of the tea from the previous kombucha. So right now there are still three that need to be dehydrated. Um, so I had to turn it on to dehydrate. And these, these are pretty much done. Check these out. So these are the chocolate banana ones that I did the other day. If you were watching my live video last night, I went about three hours and three, just over three hours, three hours and 10 minutes. 
these are the bomb diggity. Look at these. These are gorgeous, darling. If you've never had, of course, I don't, they don't sell them that I'm aware of. So check, check, check this out. Look. I can't. Looky, looky. I see you. I got my eyeball on you. Ha ha. I got my eye. Hmm. It's chocolate banana. It's with scobies from the kombucha. So let me show you the scoby because last night, if, if you didn't see my video last night, over here under that towel, we have the coffee kombucha. And I basically put all the kombucha in these bottles. Oh. And in there is the coffee and the coconut water. So. I've never seen coffee kombucha sold in the markets anywhere. But in there, that uh, gelatinous uh, cell cellulose that is floating around, you can see it better on my side if I can get it to turn around. Let's see if we can do this. Oh my gosh, that smells so good! Oh. Oh, check this out. It's being stimulated by the caffeine from the coffee and it's eating the sugars at the bottom, right? So that's how it creates and forms a SCOBY on the top. If you've never, ever, 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 look at that. Oof, this is heavy. Ugh. So I know. So I don't do the coffee and the caffeine like I used to because I have um, Raynos and Raynos is where your hands and you really feel it into the bones if anybody out there suffers from Raynos um, it's 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 an autoimmune disease which means something my body is attacking it and when I have too much caffeine it, it I start to feel cold after it it feels like I'm warm at one point and then it kind of breaks down my immune system yeah, Cheryl, so if your mom, I, I truly, I feel it, like, it, it's almost like having frostbite sometimes, too. And it might be from years of, years ago, in the days when I was outside in the cold and the snow, not wearing a hat, no, you know, the gloves weren't good enough, or walking around on concrete floors that were freezing, which is apparently bad for the kidneys, I've been told. Yeah, my hands turn white, completely lose the blood entirely. So with this colder weather, and I, you know, I live in Florida, I'm in the Sunshine State, but it gets really, really cold at certain points, and we went below freezing the other day, so what happens is the hands, you see, you can kind of tell, this was one of the tests they did for me, they had me squeeze my hands really hard and see how long it took for the red to come back, the, the blood to come back into the hands. So look at, see how you see all that pink? They're a little bit cold at the moment. They're not super cold. But when I get so cold, all of the blood comes out of my hands. They're literally white, literally white. I'll be frozen to the core of my bones. And it's very hard to articulate and move my hands. It's very paralyzing. I, I keep forgetting how bad it is until I am experiencing it in the moment. So I took Buddy for a walk and it was really nice out. For a little bit but then the cold came in and as soon as the cold came in I came back and my hands were icy and very cold and then I started trying to do something and I was going I, I, I literally could not move my fingers and I looked down at my hands and I realized there we go the rain nose kicked in and then when when my hands do finally warm up they do become red and kind of purpley and they're they're just it's it's a totally different it's a totally different experience. Now, years ago, when I went through this and I went to the doctors and they told me about it, they said, oh, we can give you high, this blood pressure medication to help it. And I'm like, okay, I, I tried it once. I did it before I went to sleep at night. And I'm gonna tell you, I got heart palpitations. I, you know, and, and that's the thing, I, you know, the warm water helps, but it still takes a while to, to warm up. Um, I got heart palpitations from this blood pressure medication they gave me. 
And it was like, oh my God, no wonder people think they're having a heart attack. That must be what that feels like. It felt like I was having some sort of a strange anxiety heart thing going on. And it could have been, I had the arm pain too. So I didn't, I didn't take any more after that. I'm like, screw that. I'm not taking, I don't like drugs to begin with. I did Vicodin once. And I thought I was on top of the world. And then the next day I felt even worse as a result of some, my neck injury back then. And I'm like going, this stuff is just, I can't do it. My body is so super hypersensitive. And this was before I went whole food plant-based. My body is so sensitive that literally, I mean, coffee too, caffeine, I know, I know my body. I, I can feel it. I can, you know, even kombucha as much as I love it and I drink it. I don't drink it all the time. So you have to learn and tap into your body's wisdom to know what works for you. And nobody can tell you what that is. A lot of times it's, it's a challenge to your ego and your mind, like I don't wanna give that up, so it can't possibly be that. Let me tell you, it was hard to give up the coffee. I lived in Naples, Italy, people. Bella Napoli. Dove deve prendere un buon caffè, un cappuccino, un espresso, un macchiato, un caffè latte, un... Uh, you know, like you really, how can you not appreciate coffee in Italy? Come on. All of Europe actually, because they, we revolve around a coffee. Like, hey, andiamo per un caffè. Io pago per un caffè, right? Caramuzze, you're so cute, Anna, I love it. <laughs> oh, you're so adorable, I love that, right? I love the way Tom said, what a mood set, right? Yes, he made that up. <laughs> so I'm going to put more hot water in my tea to try to get it back up to heated. That's why I bubbled it. It's right up at the top. And now I need to put the lid on the, the rest of this jerky leather. Fruit leather. <coughs> now... What I'm going to do is I'm going to doll these up for Tom because I know he's hungry. He'll probably want to take a picture because I always make a pretty presentation. Just saying. So, here's what we got. Beautiful Scooby leather. Does anybody remember? I think it was Romper Room. How old are you? Cheryl, I know you know this one. I spy with my little eye. I can't remember all she said. She had this ring that she would hold up. I see Bobby and Jane and, and Billy and Barbara. And, you know, she would sit there on this romper room. Oh, thank you so much, Colleen. She would sit there on, on this romper room and just shout out to all the kids. And the kids don't know any better, right? So here they were saying, Hello, and then when you heard your name, oh my gosh, it was like, you see me, because when you're younger, romper, bumper, stomper, boo, oh my gosh, I love you, oh, I love that, see, and I didn't, I, that just popped into my room, my memories, like, I used to watch, I loved Shana Na too, like, I loved Bowser's voice, I just loved the acapella, the boom in the voice so much. I'm, I'm serious, like these are the things that I can look back and go, yeah, that was a childhood, that was fun. The creativity or um, Sesame Street and Mr. Rogers and gosh, there's so much, but I don't always remember them all. I also don't remember a lot of my old patty cakes, which I wish I did, but every once in a while they'll drop in or Cat's Cradle or um, what were the, the, the hand games? There was a cat's cradle and the Chinese jump rope and jump rope and hopscotch and you know, like Red Rover, Red Rover, send so-and-so over. <laughs> Am I frapping? Frapping what? I see you. I, see, I can, see, I can actually say your names because I know who's on here. So I see Cheryl and Colleen and who else is out there? Come on, talk to me. Wouldn't you like to try this? Hi, Rhonda. I see Rhonda. You just, I see Flora. 
Hello, beautiful people. I see Julie. I think I see Tom. <laughs> I saw Robert. Oh, oh, hello. So <laughs> they're like big donuts, basically flat donuts. But this is made using kombucha scobies. And it, it's a lot easier than you think. So if you watched my video the other night, I blended up in the blender. I added some raw cacao powder. I added some flavors. So I'm going to cut these in half. Um, actually, I'm folding them in half because I'm going to make this pretty, pretty designs. And I want to try a little bit, just real quick, because I hadn't tried them yet. I know as, um, mmm, oh my gosh. You want to try? Here you go. See, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I used chia seeds in it. I put butterscotch and vanilla stevias. Mmm. Super rad and yum. Mmm. But before I forget, I know this is a chocolate kombucha. This is a chocolate coffee kombucha. So, find out how fizzy it is too. Mmm. Ooh, that would be pretty. Remember, I'm wearing blue. It could come out brown. <laughs> Gotta make sure you have your love mug because love is the truth of all that it is, right? My mom had these etched for me and sent them out. My mom's rad. Hi, Lynette. How are you? Thanks for joining. Alrighty. Sometimes you see is it bubbling up? It's bubbling up just a little. Making a little foam, a little skooma. I might post the recipe if I can remember. I might have to go back through the video, which is why I kind of hope sometimes people take notes. Oh, that smells good. This is special because this has the chocolate in it. Y'all know I lick everything. Perfect timing. Out. I know. I knew you were coming. Ah, oh, yeah. What's that song we were singing? That that Folger song, but we'll make something new up. Oh touch, yeah, yeah. The feel. The that's, touch. That's the feel of cotton. The look. Well, we can make that up too. The feel, feel of, of love. Coffee kombucha. Hello, everyone. Happy Physical Friday. Oh, do we have to do it? I have to squat down here. Hello. Have you all shared this video in food groups, kombucha groups? Look, at she's the kombucha wizard. What, what? Any uh, fermenting groups? Any gardening groups? If you love me, because you know I love you, please go join some garden groups and share, those in, share these videos in garden groups, y'all. I really want um, to learn about gardening. Oh, look at that guy on the bike. It's cold here in Florida, y'all. He had a beanie on and some uh, warmers. Check out my socks. What, what? She's got, uh, <laughs> whoops, sweat leotards on. <laughs> Can I try? Look, do you give him the love action? <clears throat> look at that. Look, look at that. Look how rich that is. Right? This one with the chocolate in it. <laughs> it's too. so good, y'all. It's so good. You gotta pop that pinky. Pop, pop, pop it like it's hot. Pop it like it's hot. Pop, 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 pop. You got a double pinky on Friday. Boom. Let's get physical, physical. I think I it's time to get do. physical. Right, Let me hear your body talk. Your body talk. Y'all know I'm a good singer. He is actually. He does try, and he, you don't always get to hear what I get to hear. But I just love singing, and if and if you think you're a good singer, just sing in the shower, and have fun. So are we gonna? Do, should we do Physical Friday? It's the ninth. Wait, what is today's date? Actually, um, we don't have the music to do that, so let's just keep. Oh, uh, that's okay. Let's just keep wrapping. It's all good. Did you show him this? 
Oh yeah, you did, huh? Hmm. Mm. Look at that. I'm gonna roll it up, baby. I'm gonna roll up your leather. You all need to try this stuff. I'm gonna roll up his leather. Can I try it? Yeah. If, yeah. Just a piece, or are you gonna roll it? Well, oh I'm wait. Gonna... I just oh. wanted to say hi. This one has the banana in it. Mmm. It's a 19th. Thank you, Cheryl. It's like a fruit roll up, y'all, but. But better. It has probiotics in it. It's, yeah, we use the SCOBY, so it's total probiotic. So we, what? I like to roll it up like a little flower. How pretty is that? Just like a flower. Hi, Danita. How are you, honey? Look, a pretty flower. Hey, look, I found a pen in my pocket. I was looking are for this pen. Are you happy to see me, or you just got a pen in your pocket? I was looking for this pen. <laughs> you know when you got a good pen and you don't want to lose it? I had it in my ninja pocket, and I didn't even know. So now, I'm going to flip this one around. This is kind of fun. I like making art with my food. Sometimes I find art in my house in different areas around. If you've ever seen, I've posted pictures of the art that somebody leaves behind for me. This is art. I'm like, uh -huh. yeah, okay. <laughs> Everybody's got their expression, right? So we draw, we, we have to love on everybody and See how creative a person can be when they're just hanging in the kitchen, you and me? Hello. So I've got two, two booches over here. I'm gonna put them on a pretty plate. I also have, I have coconut yogurt, y'all. Ooh, I wonder. Here's what happens with me. I'm already thinking, Coffee kombucha, how would it taste if I put a dollop of the coconut yogurt in that? It's vanilla. Two totally different fermentations together. Yum. So I love my Rocco Bormiolis. Is what is hereditary? The Reynos? I'm not sure. That's a good question. Or the or the artistic side of us, right? I love this because it has all these pretty little fruits and designs, and there's there's um, butterflies, and I thought there was a bumblebee in here, but I don't see it. So this, ah oh, man, again, smell a vision. Y'all need smell a vision. I made this with coconut meat, <sighs> vanilla. Good, yummy. Got the spoon, and I'm not afraid to use it. Ultimately, I'm gonna put this on the plate anyway to go with these scoby jerkies, fruit that is. Ooh, yeah. See, this is special stuff. I don't usually bring out the big guns when I go out of my house. Okay, so now, just because I'm curious, and I've never done it, first I show you. Ain't that pretty? So, I already know, it's. I'm probably gonna cut up some bananas and put it on the plate as well. trying to make it align better. And now what I want to try is this coconut yogurt in the kombucha, the coffee kombucha. What the heck? It can't, can't hurt to try. Love you. See you later. Never know. I may be still in here. Mm. So it's kind of like a coffee kombucha float with coconut yogurt. Hey, why not? Can't hurt. Mmm. Actually, might be really, really good. And I've done that. I've made floats using my kombucha. Yummy. 
but you have to have the right stuff. <clears throat> Did it a long time ago. I know, right, Danita? We do. That is so true. You eat with your eyes. Most people don't recognize it, but they'll look at food. You know, you've been, have you ever had that one person and there's always that one person? Ew, that's disgusting. Ew, that's gross. And you know what? That's not kind. That's not nice. But that's just a reflection of the person. When people judge others for what they eat. Exactly. It doesn't matter what they eat. It's not your business. Let people eat what they want to eat. What, what? Free to be you and me. Free to be you and me. He may come back to try this. So looky, looky. I've got a coconut yogurt float. Isn't that rad? I bet you this is going to be delicious. I used to love root beer floats. Who all out there didn't love love them some root beer float, floats up there, right? Mm. Those fountain floats, OMG, you know, you'd have the long cup, like kind of like this, maybe a little bit longer. Or, no, actually, it was the one that had a nice little stand, and it came up, and it was kind of flared out at the top like a flower. And you'd have this long spoon and a long straw. And I tell you what, I've got the spoons. My mom, when we were kids, we used to have the old um, root beer float spoons. Oh, my gosh. Allison, it's the bomb. And I don't do sodas anymore. I don't, in fact, unless I can get a really good root beer, which does exist. I have had them. But what I would do instead of using regular ice cream is get like a coconut vanilla ice cream or make your own banana ice cream nice cream even better because it's so much more flavorful and it's real look cheers to adding that kombucha yeah there's a little flaky but I'm loving it mmm it's good Sweet surrender to love. I know, right? Oh. Get in my belly. Mm. Are you all sharing this video? You never know. I don't, I go through so many little goodies in my kitchen. It might spark some interest and somebody may get creativity uh, motivation going on, right? And then I want to see y'all post in the group what it is I inspire you to create in your kitchen. Mm. Tom will like that. And I gotta admit, my coconut yogurt is the bomb. Mm. Seriously. I don't make this stuff up. Do y'all lick your stuff? It is unique. The flavor is unique, Danita. Do you want me to put bananas in? Oh, see, I knew he was coming for it. <laughs> hey, let's, I want to get something right. You all inspire us. You all <coughs> motivate us. And today's post was fantastic because I put this really, really rad, delicious, like, meal of, like, it has bacon, it has hash browns, it has mushrooms, it has all this stuff and eggs. And it's delicious. I don't eat it, but it's still delicious. And there's like 400 comments in there. And in a normal vegan group, you wouldn't be able to do that. But I probably wrapped up like 40 people today that have said, Hey, Tom, thanks for being so rad about posting this type of stuff. I really do want to try to eat healthier and maybe do want to start juicing. And so you all, those type of people that reach out to me, you all inspire and motivate me and keep me doing what I'm doing. So thank you so much. Pinky Pops. He was still chewing on his nanner while he was telling you all that. You notice that? He's he's so rad. He can't contain himself. He's so busy over here. He's like the mastermind. Did you what'd you put in there? The coconut yogurt. And we stir it up. I did. Oh, hold on, I got the spoon. It's the one that made all that noise. 
<laughs> he knows how badly I like to stir it up. You got. I have to tell you guys a story. <laughs> I asked her one day. We were just playing, rapping in here because we rap all day like this. <laughs> just sometimes y'all will get bored of us. I understand it. But one time I looked at her and I was dead serious, and so was she. And I said, <laughs> I said, I said, I said, oh no, wait, wait, what is spoon? I was like, oh, I said, what was the best thing you stirred today? And she said, I don't know, because she when she stirs something like she's stirring pudding, she's just all like this. And then I said, okay. Then she gave me something. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's like the top five things you've ever eaten. And I said, what was the what was the best thing you've cooked since this? She's like, my last pie. And I'm like, you are so legend. She's so confident. I was like, that's so good. I'm like, wow, what's the best thing you've cooked other than this? She's like, my last pie. As she was pulling up her socks, it was so. It was the banana <laughs> it was cream so chocolate funny. pie. Yeah, all. banana cream chocolate pie. Anything that you create that's like from real food and real ingredients, it's gonna turn out good. Literally, it's gonna turn out good. If it's real food, fresh ingredients, and you prepare it with love, it's gonna be yummy. Pinky pop and all. I remember because I was standing here and he was standing over there. Much better with clump, without clumps. Well, it's still a little clumpy, but I still drink it. It's good. I'm, I want the whole thing. Is it here? Is it yours? Oh, and then did. No, no, that's yours. Oh, that's yours. Can I have that too? Well, do you want a picture? Do you want it with bananas? Um, we can make a picture another time. Okay. So look. <coughs> look what's for... This is my meal, y'all. This is my first meal of the day, right? Actually, just haunts a loogie. Hawk another loogie in there. <laughs> I love it! She even had the... I'm getting the last of this crap out of myself. I am so not holding back. I don't need to hold on to this any longer. Hey, you she, let that shit go. When she brushes her teeth, she's in there for like 25 minutes doing this sensei nostril stuff. It's legit. But look, y'all. Look at that. It's a kombucha fruit roll-up with coconut yogurt and kombucha with coconut yogurt in it. Like, I mean, come on, y'all. That's why I have all this energy to serve y'all because I'm eating her delicious food. I'm going to come back for that banana. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> we really do have fun all day, every day. We have our moments, um, and it's, it, but even still, you know, every once in a while, we're human, and we, and things come up, and it's all good, and the beauty is, is that we still, we still come back to the gratitude, the appreciation for one another, and how we serve one another, and that's why it is so imperative that we take that we created the group for you all to foster that same type of living like we're really truly trying to hold the space for each and every one of you to be in your authentic your authentic true self and to do it unapologetically like you have nothing to prove to anyone as long as you're kind and compassionate and again I understand it has to start with self and when you see somebody out there, especially in our group, and you recognize they're being unkind, one of the ways that I've learned compassion is to reach within and go, wow, if they're being that unkind to others around them, imagine how they're treating themselves from the inside. And that's usually a huge indicator. If someone is hurtful, wrong, mean, has the H-A-T-E inside of them so deeply, that's where they're showing up. That's what they're coming, where they're coming from. It's not that they intentionally want to be unkind to people. It's just that they're so unkind inside. They're so unhappy inside. They're, they're projecting it. They're, they're, they're basically, that's their vibration. And a lot of times, I know in my past personally, when I attacked outward to other people, it was only because of my own impatience, my own test of self-love, my own uh, stuff going on within myself. So that's what I've spent many years working on, cultivating, creating, and harboring the self-love, uh, nurturing myself, learning to like myself. The hardest thing for me was sitting in a meditation because I didn't necessarily want to be alone with myself, but I didn't identify it that way. The way I would see it was, well, I got better things to do. In my mind, I got lots of things I got to be doing. I got a list over here. Because that was my distraction from sitting with what was or what is. It's easy for me to get, oh, I'm going to go in the kitchen. 
couple years ago I was doing the Beyond Addiction program that I'm in again this year, and when I was sitting at my desk working on my projects and the stuff for that program, things I knew I needed to get done, I caught myself in midstream where I was thinking, I'm going to go out in the kitchen, I'm going to go prepare something, because my rational mind, the mind is very tricky, was able to validate, well, I'm going to have to eat anyway, so I might as well go in the kitchen. And by doing that, it took me out of sitting at the ta- at the desk and doing what I needed to get done at that moment. Sometimes we use those little distractions to take us away from what needs to be done. And I'll tell you what, I can beat myself up about it and have done it very well in the past. That if I'm not getting what I need to get done and somebody else comes and piles something on top of me and I'm feeling the pressure, right? instead of going within and sitting with where is this originating from if I'm upset within myself and then someone puts something else on top of me and I feel really pressurized eventually that pressure builds right and we explode and usually it's 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 verbal vomit all over those who are closest nearest and dearest to us at the time it snaps and so it's not that we mean to do it to other people sometimes it's very humbling And when we do it, we always regret it in the end, don't we? Because we realize later, oh my gosh, maybe I didn't mean to do that to that person. And when you do go and you trace it back to the originating source of why was I really even upset? Well, first off, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. The day started out bad and it just kept on getting worse. Instead of taking time to clear your thoughts and to set the intention for a beautiful day, you allowed that to ensue. You allowed the anger, the upset, the the pain to continue through your day and now everything that's built up has just gotten you to the point where like I've had it it's simple things like tapping into the breath listening to your thoughts and questioning them observing them but not attaching to them but recognizing where they're coming from and if someone else comes in and you're having a bad day taking time to breathe catching yourself morning walks are the best Mm. And just reminding yourself that everybody deserves love and kindness and compassion and it has to be starting with yourself first. So when you do that for you, now you've created this, this space where now you have a little bit of a buffer that anything else external to you isn't going to be seen as a threat. It's going to be seen as a moment to pause exactly Donita it's the the pauses between the inhale and the exhale and the exhale and the inhale that's where you're gonna glean the most wisdom this is my personal experience I don't know what your wisdom is gonna be but that's what I've learned over the years that it took me time to want to even sit by myself and be alone because I'm a very social person and so if I'm out with everybody else I don't have to deal with my own stuff And it's easy to get caught up in other people's stuff and stories and gossip. And also, unfortunately, what does that do? It creates more stories for our own stuff. Because when you get caught up in someone else's stuff, now you've taken on their stuff and your stuff. So if you got a lot of stuff going on back here, which I know I do and still working on it, now you're creating more more stuff. It's like the bags, the clutter. There's a reflection there, right? So that's just just a quick little wrap on that. Somebody forgot the banana, just saying. <laughs> I don't know where he is, but when he's ready, he'll come back for it. It's, it's Nana time. So let's see, we did the coffee kombucha. We added some of the coconut yogurt, which is the bomb diggity baby. Back since I'm at it. I don't eat this enough. It gets eaten quickly though. Mmm. Good. We had been out of coconut com- coconut yogurt for a while, and I made this last what a few days ago. Mmm. There's another jar in the fridge. Fortunately, it's not a big jar. It's just a small jar. Mmm. So yes, when you see somebody is hurtful. Chances are, it's a huge reflection of whatever is going on within them. It's taught me to be more compassionate and kind to even those people they need it the most. Um, 
it's a little bit more difficult when it's in a forum of comments because unfortunately sometimes they're just looking to create a dialogue because they're looking for human connection and that's how they get attention so we're all all of our inner childs need attention right and sometimes acting out is how people are used to getting the attention it's not always the kindest whereas other people have learned over time that I don't have to act out to get attention the, ten, the attention that you typically need is usually your own. We don't really need other people to give us attention. So where energy goes, where attention goes, energy flows. Focus on what you know you can work on for yourself. And then it'll make it easier to be kinder and compassionate to others around you. So putting stuff away, organizing up in here. <sighs> I'm feeling good today. Are y'all feeling good today? I buy in bulk. What do y'all do? So this is one of my favorite. Um, I use this stuff like cray cray because I love curry. Looky looky. So I get this curry powder in bulk. And I have my little jar of it that gets refilled. Whoops. I refill this regularly because it helps. It's actually cheaper in the long run to buy in bulk and just refill your containers. And because I go through it so regularly, it's, it makes sense for me. <coughs> now, another thing. I know, right? Totally addicted to curry. Anything turmeric, because what I tend to do, I throw turmeric in everything. Did I show y'all this turmeric that I got at the market when Tom and I went the last time? It's white turmeric. It's like super potent it's even more in fact i need to take some i got ginger and i got turmeric and these are so, they look so funky it's so fun looky looky so this is ginger look at the difference so first off this white turmeric is supposed to be the most potent of them all from my understanding Ginger is always good as a backwash because it's so, this is florally smelling and tasting. Hey, look, you can look into my sink. Isn't that cool? You can see part of it down there. So I'm going to clean this off so you can all get a glimpse of it. It's, it's almost, it's so, what's the word? So ripe, so fresh. It's kind of a, it's like this neon green yellow. It's, it's kind of rad. I like it. And again, turmeric will stain. Look at, look at how bright that is. Like, that's real food. Have y'all had this before? All natural Indian spices. I'm telling you, Rebecca, I'm, I was completely floored when this, this woman she said that they grow this in her country and that they they actually make a poultice out of it and they put it on their back and there's if you have like a pain or an ache i'm actually going to eat it after i clean off the skin of it you can you can eat the skin i think it's just sometimes like we say we eat with our eyes you don't necessarily want to just because oh, it doesn't look pretty it doesn't look edible the skin is where most nutrients of anything that you ingest is, right? So here's what it looks like. Look at how bright and colorful that is. How green and yellow. It's like neon. I know you can't see like what the way I do, but it's like this neon. The flavor of this is very floral. Oh yeah. It's very, very powerful. It's almost, it almost tastes like soap sometimes. It's very, very powerful. Your smell. I smell that? that all the time. This is the, the turmeric. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes I've seen turmeric extremely expensive. I think, I think I'm just going to guess. It was like... I know at Natural Grocers, I saw like $18, maybe it was an ounce, it was it an ounce, $18 maybe a pound, pound maybe, and it wasn't this floral stuff, it was like an orange turmeric, but I mean, elixirs, teas, 
oatmeal, smoothies, all of it. Soups, turmeric, turmeric, turmeric all day, every day. Now that is ginger, right? This is what you need to chew on after you chew on that. Yeah, and it could get hot. Spicy! It could get really, really hot. You want a little piece of it? Yeah. Because he doesn't chew on it as long as I do. I chew it up. Yeah. Yeah. Look, how could we don't have 100 people in here, y'all? Do you see how much we learn? I will do... I'll do 10 lit love... I'll do 10 love spin moves, and this is already hot. <laughs> you ate a whole thing? Look at him over there. He's like, yeah, it's hot. It's hot. You better watch it. <laughs> you better watch it. I will do 10 love spin moves. <laughs> <laughs> you know what Jordan used to do? Hey. I'm gonna I'm gonna post Jordan's very first video on Facebook Live when she slid up into my kitchen when I was in my bedroom. I'll share that in the group today. Uh, at ridiculously rod ridiculously authentic if you've never been in there. And it's adorable because she used to do this. She used to do uh, junk food review, right? Wait, wait, junk food review. Wait, junk, junk food, food review. Yeah, junk food review. And I used to take her to the candy store and she would buy a bunch of candy and then she would get like a, an optimal version. But um, oh. I will look at <clears throat> we have 68 people I'm gonna go ninja flip and go do something if we can get a hundred people in here I will come back and do 10 love spin booms will you try to do it in a row too yeah 10 love spin booms and remember you burn 900 calories every love spin boom so we could lo lose 10,000 calories y'all and 10, <laughs> 10 love spin booms <laughs> all you do is just share it in a bunch of groups y'all because what happens is, is people learn in these comment sections right then you all can friend each other right you know what I thought about yesterday I thought about who's gonna be the first like ridiculously authentic like couple that they meet in the group and they're like you gotta try this soy and the other person's like well I think soy is unhealthy and then they start collaborating and then they go on a date and they get married so that's how that can happen in the comment section y'all the more people that play you know the more connections we can have so see if they can get to a hundred I know y'all are in groups anything throw them in all sort medical medium Dr. Axe uh, uh, Dr. Robert Morris um, yoga groups, meditation groups, addiction groups, drug addiction groups, all that stuff. Get that to anxiety. 100 and I'll come... Anxiety, y'all. And I'll come back in here and play. And he likes to play. Yeah! Did you get the nanner? Boom! We'll He's do good. 10 in a row. Because I don't think she could do 10 in a row. But we'll I see. can too. I surprise him every single day. We make each other laugh. And I mean really belly laughs. Do y'all have that in your life? Because if you don't, you got to get some. That's what I was talking about. Your cray-cray. you got to find someone whose cray-cray matches your cray-cray. Right? I know, Sherry. So here's the deal. You know, you use your own judgment, but we do encourage one another to reach out and become friends with each other in the group because, um, you know, you're all inspiring. And you're creating your own community. And I know for me here in Clearwater, Florida... I have a goddess group and I have an amazing kundalini yoga community and then I also have the yoga studio that I teach at and it's amazing I'm very blessed I know I have people that if I need I can reach out to them we created this group for you because there's not always that available for everybody where they are and some people are struggling with family members uh, that they you know you can't always get rid of the people that are bringing you down but you can work on finding the people that will bring you up just simply through the power of social media. So this is why we say this is the web of inclusion and we are embracing each and every one of you where you're at and loving you and loving everything you share about who you are. There are no shackles. We, we, we encourage you to go live. We want to meet you. We'll even invite you on our broadcast if you are interested. Carl. I'm talking to you. I want to see Carl singing in the group live because Carl's Carl's been with us. One of the he's been one of the longest people with us since we started, even before. Um, yeah, inspirational stories. No matter what you've been through in life, this group is really meant for you to feel like, oh my gosh, there are people who aren't going to judge me. We're here to support you. We're here to hold on to you through whatever you're going through. And again. You're inspiring us. That's why we show up every single day is uh, whether we go live or not, we see you. We see you. We read your stories. We watch your videos. We are just smiling ear to ear. Some of them are so heartfelt. We're crying. Sometimes we're like, wow, we know how much courage it takes. 
But see, that's where you're exercising that courage muscle, right? When you exercise that courage muscle, what it does is it creates that synapsis in the brain and you create new neurons and neurological patterns. When you exercise that courage muscle, you're also releasing those happy hormones and your body's giving you your own reward system to where you realize, I can do that. See, look at that. I just did it. That's where the mind will serve you. It'll say, oh my gosh, I didn't think I could do it, but I was able to do it. That's how the mind will play. If, if you've trained the mind properly, you can get it to recognize the benefit of going outside of your comfort zone. Because then once you've done it once, you build up that muscle and then you realize I can do it again and you do it again and you do something else. Well, every time you step out of your comfort zone, you are creating a new neurological pathway and you're like, I mean, you're really keeping yourself young and youthful because if you continue in the same patterns and behavior in your life, then you're not going to grow. And that's the only way we grow is by doing something we're not used to doing. So yes, we encourage you to go live. We encourage you to share whatever it is that may feel like you don't want to, but when you're ready, when you're ready. So ginger, 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 baby. <coughs> I got my, my hot tea and my love mug. A little bit of spice is always so nice. Ooh, that was spicy spice. That's why, you know, like we say, sharing even in anxiety depression groups is really powerful because we want to bring people together who will help those who are looking to finally find that hugging, loving embrace that y'all share and show up for one another in the group. Hi, Paolo. So, what else would you like to see in the kitchen? I know I've got some things up my sleeve. And y'all know I can rap for days. Facebook only has four hours. Who all out there knows what this is good for? Oregano. Oregano is amazing. Again, antibacterial, antimicrobial. If you're suffering with any issues of um, parasites, are good. it's good for clearing out parasites in the body. It's gooding, it's gooding, listen to me, it's gooding. It's good, like, if you've got a, a sinus infection, a viral infection, it's super powerful, by the way. <clears throat> It'll change the taste of everything. Wah! Wah! Oh! Yeah, that was a lot. Yeah, antibiotic is great for tooth pain. You're right, Danita. What was that? <laughs> oh, oregano. This stuff is <coughs> potent, y'all. My tongue is burning right now. Yeah. Well, did you do a lot of it? Of course I did. <laughs> Y'all need to try this. It's really, really potent, huh? Coconut yogurt. How much did you take of this? A little. Uh, it really wasn't as much as I, I could have. smell it. Oh, you can only imagine what was in that breath. You have a lot going on. Turmeric, ginger, and oregano oral. That's a lot, y'all. She's a sensei. I would not advise to do that much at one time. If you do, make oh, sure no. you get... Yes, it will be, because I feel it. What I recommend, <clears throat> now that my tongue is numb, first it was burning, now it's numb. So you could do avocado, coconut yogurt, something that's going to neutralize. When it, you get something burning, you have to nor, ne, neutralize it with something. But I don't mean like, not an actual process oil, but more of a, a like a, like I said, even nuts, a whole food oil base. Whole food fat is what I meant, not oil. So this is totally funky flavored now with the oregano, but it's still yummy. That was cray cray, right? You're only gonna see that here. And I've done that before. So I've used oregano oil topically and internally. 
One of the things I've learned over the years, they, they don't recommend you, you regularly ingest it because you can kill off the good bacteria and flora. But if you do have a viral infection or dental, it's great topical. <coughs> That's going to bring something up. <coughs> I think I'm going to have to honk a loogie, y'all. Honk a loogie. Let's show your skill. And I just came up with the raddest idea. That, that was a dripper. You said to show us your skill. I thought I would. Y'all want to do a coffee enema? Come on, let's show. <laughs> Hold on a minute. Be careful. Whatever you're going to do, be careful. Oh, what are you doing? What is that? <laughs> it's a bottle. What is that? Oh, just the bottle top. You've done coffee enemas, haven't you? Mm-hmm. Tell them the experience of a coffee enema. And if you all have done coffee enemas, in the comment section, let us know and we can like have a coffee enema event. Sometimes I say emina instead of... Emina, 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 emina. I do that coffee, too. coffee enema. Yes. And it really just cleans out all your caca. Well, it, it's a little bit more than just that. In fact, typically you have a hydrocolon cleanse first. You don't have it backed up with poo when you do that. Although that might be the idea because you think you're backed up you would do an enema It's hard to put something in if it's backed up with other stuff is the point So in the past when I've done Hydrocolon therapy and had a coffee implant or enema whichever you want to call it whatever appeals verbally you never know I have used My girlfriend used to do I used to go to my girlfriend years ago um, she cleanses you out with warm, you know, like body temperature water. <laughs> and then after that, puts the coffee in. Now I have a bucket with the hose. You put it in the bucket and you, you can do it yourself at home, but I highly recommend <coughs> let someone else do it for you first. You can, you can actually use this internally, but it has to be diluted significantly. I would not recommend putting, you have to dilute this baby big time if you wanted to use oregano as part of your enema. But you can do a whole herbal concoction down there as well. But the benefits of having a coffee implant is it throws your liver into parathesis. And so what happens with parathesis is, I think it's every three seconds or every six seconds or something like that, the liver, gets fresh blood so it, it takes it it stimulates it it's doing the squeeze release squeeze release and with the coffee enema it's it, it's stimulating it throwing it into that parathesis squeeze release and so it gets that fresh blood every I think it's it might be six minutes maybe seven I'm, I don't quote me on the time it's been a while since I've done this you would lay on your right side because of the ascending descending colon right plop that hose on in, assuming you've had a full butt BM at home or gone to hydrocolon therapy because you want that, but you want a clean, you want clean pipes, okay? You put, plug it in with the hose, you know, with the bucket up ahead. This is why you need, it's really helpful if you got a second person. And you allow the liquid to go all up in. There's a certain amount that your body can hold. And then you're going to clench it. And the ideal is to turn over um, on your left side and just lay there. Hold on a minute. No, I think you stay on the same side. Don't quote me on this. So either way you look at it, you got to be aware that you're going to hold it in and that you're not going to let it out. The longer you can keep it in, the better. I've done it a half an hour and you can do it longer, but you don't want to go too long. I mean, you can do, as long as you do like 10, 15 minutes, you're probably good, but it depends on you. And it's really like a clean stimulation. So we ingest coffee, but it's totally different when it comes from the other end, because you've got, again, the lining of your colon is thinner. It's, you have these different areas where it's more, you know, the, the, the thinner the skin, the quicker the absorption, and closer to the bloodstream. So that coffee's going into the bloodstream much quicker. Um, and so, yeah, it's an interesting experience. And I always feel so amazing and refreshed and like, oh, I'm awake. 
And a hold what in, Mary? Okay, so Mary, I was just talking about if you were to do a coffee implant and how you would turn over on your right side. Actually, no, maybe it is the left side. Might be the left side. And you put the bucket, I'm gonna have to look it up, I'll be honest. I just haven't done it in a while. So I've done it myself before too, and I did it using um, using espresso coffee that I made and I let it cool down because you want it to cool down and it really needs to be like body temperature because if it's too cold, you're gonna feel it, right? You don't want it too cold, you want it just nice warm. It's very powerful stuff. So yeah, that's that's actually, it's hey, it's completely natural. I, I know they've been doing this stuff for years. You wanna make sure that you're not just putting anything up on inside yourself either. Um, I remember the first time, somebody told me this story and I don't know if y'all know about this. Some My hydrocolon therapist, she said, didn't you know that there's kids, they're taking tampons and soaking it with alcohol and sticking it up inside themselves so that they can't, don't have the smell of alcohol in their breath? Do you know how toxic and deadly that is, y'all? That is hugely toxic and hugely deadly. I don't recommend that. You, people die from stuff like that. So just so you know, I was totally unaware. She told me this years ago. It must have been 2010 or 11 that I first even heard of this. I'm like, oh my gosh, that makes sense. Now I get that because it is such a thin layer, whether you're a female and you're going from the front or the back or a man. So it's an interesting dynamic, but you gotta be careful. Don't just be going out and doing stuff like that. You wanna make sure you know what is approval for your body. You know, don't just be sticking stuff up and inside yourself. What you looking for? Hey, um, about the, the coffee thing, do you know uh, Matt Monarch from Raw Food? The Raw Food World. Raw Food World. He did a YouTube video and said he got addicted to coffee enemas. Like he said he did them every day, multiple times for oh my gosh. two to three years. And, and he said he wasn't addicted to the uh, to the feeling he was addicted to um, like the confidence it would give him it, it was really really weird that how he like admitted that like wow. could you imagine doing multiple co coffee enemas every single day for years like that's an addiction by itself right and then not wow. telling anybody and <coughs> not, not being raw about it and knowing that he's fighting that and knowing that he's doing that every day and then he goes front and center like that was like a big video video. But he maybe he didn't even realize it at the time. It's very possible that he, he came into that awareness as a result of the time that he was doing it. A lot of times I found from my own personal experience, I don't see it until long after I've, I've surpassed it. And so that's a huge awareness on his part. And I've, I've followed him over the years since when I first went to the whole raw food side of the house. And he's, he's him and his, his now partner, his ex-wife, or they're splitting, but... Um, their story, the story first off that she was overweight and all of that and how they came together and the beautiful, you know, stuff that they've created. Um, it's really humbling. Everybody's got their path and there's a lot of people out there you may, you may follow and then they come out with some truth that you don't resonate with, but you know, that's part of their journey and part of their path. And we may not realize their authenticity is just what it is at that moment. So again, you know, you can't shoot the messenger or pick on anybody because you don't know what they're going through. And mm -hmm. the reason that people withhold stuff is because they're not ready yet to release or even be confronted by he it. He mentioned something about a, a spiritual revolution or something like that that he had, or a spiritual you know, awakening that he had, and then so he kind of came clean with that. Talk about Sweet. that. Or oh, that's where I'm heading next. Like that. <clears throat> so that's huge. That's huge for anybody um, to come to those spiritual awakening moments. I know in my own life, um, one of my huge ones over the years before I continue with the kimchi issue that I got to deal with, um, my two years ago when I was doing the Beyond Addiction program that I'm in now, I was sitting in my, my bedroom and I remember my dad was going into another room and I was having a moment. And it was huge because I had already read Power Versus Force by David R. Hawkins and several of his other books, which are very high vibrational books. Highly recommend them if you get a chance because they're, they're super, super deep and sometimes a little bit hard to read. That first Power Versus Force book is, is really, to me, you gotta take it easy and read into it slowly and regurgitate and, and actually let it sink in because one of the statements he says in there is, is patience starts with self. 
And I, I tell you what, sometimes you read over something, you can get all, you can amass all this information. You can talk till you're blue in the face. You can t regurgitate the information, but are you integrating it into your life? Are you actually living the talk, not just talking the talk? So you got to walk the talk. And we're all coming into our own at our own times and not to judge anybody because the reality is they're where they're at. We do judge all the time because we're comparing ourselves all the time. That's a natural human trait because we're trying to see where we're at, but sometimes it gets out of hand and that's when it becomes a serious judgment versus a discernment and a learning of self. Um, so I'm in my bedroom and my dad goes in the other room and I see him and I had a moment where I was sitting there and going, wow, who am I to say that I know what my dad needs? Why do I feel like I need to change or get him to do things differently than the way he's doing them? If I just allow him to do what he's doing and love him where he's at, because here's the humbling part. We're not, ever, we're not loving someone if we're trying to change them or tell them what they, they need to do without them asking. If they show up to you and you can, you can discern, they're truly coming with, with that intention to receive from you when they ask for your guidance, they ask for your advice. When someone shows up to you in their rawness, See, that's in itself takes courage to do. Asking for your consilience, your guidance. That, that shows a lot of trust. And you can't assume that everybody wants to trust you just because you want to impose it. You want to share information, you've got to discern those who are ready to receive it. And so when someone comes to you, that's more, that's more powerful because they're putting their trust in you, their confidence in you. They want what you have for information and that's huge so with my dad I had to sit back and be very humble and recognize I wasn't loving him for who he was in the moment and honoring it and appreciating it for what it is because he has his own journey and even though I can see things in people doesn't mean they're ready to change them or to improve them or do anything they need to do in what I see I'm aware of it, but you know what? It's not my place to fix or, or help anyone unless they ask for it and they're open to receiving it. That was huge for me because that was where I had to sit with compassion and the patience for myself because when we have ourselves gone through something very traumatic or we don't want to suffer, we didn't, we suffered to figure something out ourselves, we don't want to see our loved ones suffer. And when you sit there and you see what is a resemblance of your own suffering again, that's when you think, oh, well, I need to help them. But the reality is there's times when you need to go, I need to honor that they need to go through that process for themselves. Unless they come to you asking for a better way or solution or something. This is the one truth I've learned in my life for me. I know for myself, if you try to tell me something, I've got a strong will and ego. And that will piss me off even more sometimes if somebody else tries to impose or tell me something. Unless I respect you and I ask you, I just know how my mind operates. And if you try to tell me what you think is right for me, then clearly you don't love me where I'm at. And you're not appreciating where I'm coming from. And maybe if I ask you, that would be different. So this is a, a dialogue that comes up quite often. And I just, just wanted to share that because that was very huge for me. So from that point on, I was hands off. I'm like, let my dad be. Let him be. And even when those moments, my dad gets really angry when he drops or he breaks something and he's like starts cursing up a storm. Because of the fixer, people pleaser that I am, I would just be like, dad, just go. I got it. I'm cleaning it up. But see, that was an enabling tactic that wasn't helping him. It's things like that where I had to step away and let him go through it. And you know what I learned? Just one experience where he broke something and was cleaning it up. He went in the other room, it all dissipated, it was gone like that, and in a matter of, I don't know, within a, the next half hour, hour, he's just like, nothing happened, right? Whereas if I stepped in, maybe it wouldn't have it transitioned as smoothly for him to, to go through that process. So yeah, it's it really is, that's what meditation has done for me, that's what my own personal awareness and seeing things as they are has really gleaned, and it's huge. Um, and everybody's story is different. So our story is ours and nobody has the same story. So I can't tell you how something is for you because I have a whole different history behind me.
So I'm actually nibbling over here again. If you're just tuning in. Kombucha fruit leather. This is chocolate, coffee kombucha, scoby, chia seeds, some butterscotch toffee, some bananas. That's just like, it's better than fruit roll-ups. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Mm. I can taste banana in there. Mmm. I'm serious. This is like the bomb diggity baby. And it's like a big flat donut, or it was. Look at my halo. I can see your halo. Everybody else got a halo out there? So moving on. I got more stuff to do in the kitchen today, I'm telling you. <clears throat> Still chewing. I got so much going on over here. Mm. It's chewy and it sticks in your teeth just like a regular fruit roll up. I need to put this back in the fridge. Little shh. Coffee, mocha, chocolatey kombucha. Yum yum in my tum. This go in the fridge because it's not cold enough. Actually, even better, the freezer because then it gets a little icy, and that's pretty good too. So here's the deal, yo yo yo. Because <laughs> I like to play. So I made a second bottle and I left too much air on the top and that's why we have da -da, this is going on. So this would be called a laboratory experiment. Little moldy, but truly it's not mold, it's yeast. I don't know why there's stuff on the side of this. Hmm, interesting. <coughs> I swore I cleaned these bottles off when I put them over there. Hi there. How are you today? It speaks to me too. It, you can smell the yeast of it actually. And I can only show you so much because it's really not going to show the way. I don't want to get it all up inside. So we're going to let the smell, the sniff tester hair in there. You smell the, the yeast of it? Yeah, just, 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 a, just a little bit though. You could still smell that delicious oh. kimchi. But you could because smell. I moved it. You could smell the huge difference. Are you just going to spoon that layer out? I'm not going to do anything with it right now because it's going to be too messy. Yeah. But what I'm going to do is clean it out. Um, I have had this happen before. It is kimchi, Carl. I have had this happen in the past, and what I've done is it's not going to hurt you. It's not going to kill you. It's just a different flavor. It's not going to taste the same. I have used it before, like just. I didn't get rid of it. I could throw it in the compost. I mean, there's, there's a bunch of different things you can do with it. Um, but I would highly recommend you put more water in it next time, like I did this one. So, so there's not a lot of air is on top compared to the yeah, other Yeah, and, and so, and it's possible something got in there as well. It's so hard to tell with the air, right? So this one is, the, is how it should look. And I also have more, um, what's it called? cabbage in the refrigerator. Huge difference in smell, by the way. It is bubbly. Smelling good, looking good, pretty colors. Can you smell that beauty? Hmm. So this kimchi. And, and the other thing I thought about doing is throwing in some cayenne pepper. So antimicrobial, the spicy pepper and stuff like that will kill a lot of things. Cinnamon, but we're not putting cinnamon in here. This is what I'm gonna do right now. I wanna see, I'm doing, this is part of my experiment. I will spoon it out later, but what I wanna see is if I put some cayenne pepper in there, if that will actually get rid of it. I'm serious, Danita, it is the bomb diggity sniffer over here. I said sniffer so, can you see what I'm doing? This is in the way, I'm sure. Okay. I'm going to slide this all over so you can see better. 
So the cayenne that I have, again, I buy in bulk, and it is really, really spicy. Let me put this down. I'm going to put this away, the ginger and the turmeric. Go back in the fridge. I still got stuff stuck in my t-shirt. It's very chewy. Very chewy. Chew, 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 chew your food like till it's water. So I'm going to take a look, the cayenne pepper and just try to sprinkle it over the top of this white uh, yeast growth and see, because my curiosity is this. First off, it's already meant to be spicy. But second, I'm wondering because cayenne is very high in, in its uh, vitamin C and it's my, you know, like it's something you can do to, <laughs> It might kill it. I don't know. Let's see. It's going to be extra spicy on this batch. I'm telling you. That's okay because we like it spicy and up in here. That's easily like a teaspoon. Maybe two. So now instead of white, except for up on the sides, I am going to wipe up the sides. That's what I will do. And so that requires me taking my, my trusty rings off. Hi, Ava. How are you, beautiful? How are you doing today? Again, share this video, y'all. You never know. Somebody out there could use a little bit of culturing from some fermentation, some ideas, how you can utilize kombucha scoby creating your own fruit roll-ups, kimchi, dehydration. I made coffee kombucha. If you didn't see earlier, you may want to tune in later. <coughs> now, what I'm going to do is going to get a paper towel because I have one right here. And I'm going to go up and inside of here I'm gonna just go up around the rim because what happens is, is that means all of the, what's the word I want? Um, all of the, okay, so yeast and bacteria, all the spores is the word I was looking for, have created its own little mess around the top because of their aerobic, right? So I'm going to use this towel to wipe off as well as I can much of the spory stuff, especially this white stuff that's around the edge over here. It's the only way you're going to get it out of there, peeps. You got to get up close and personal, deep down into your own kimchi, and then you'll see when I'm done. It's not going to hurt anything. I got some cayenne on it. It's all cool. I'm gonna flip this and turn around on the other side because I got a whole section right there. Can you see the white stuff? So yeah, I mean, it's not gonna hurt anything even if you did ingest a little of it or some of it. In fact, it's just an overgrowth of yeast. Unless you have a yeast issue, like if you have candida, that may be an issue there for you. Although I don't know if it's the same form of yeast, so don't quote me on that either off the top of my head. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a, spe I'm not a perfect. I do a lot of research and I'm always learning myself. And to me, that's the beauty of life. There's always something new to learn. And that's what makes you authentic. You know, like if you wanna try this at home, you do it on your time and just let yourself be the, uh, your own guinea pig. I love playing in my kitchen and trying new things. And even if it tells me, like, okay, so kombucha, for example, I was told or read, not told, I did all this research and I have already a problem with cleanliness. So my sta standard of cleanliness to one person is not someone else's. Somebody could be higher than my standard, somebody could be lower than my standard. But that's where we're all different, right? So everything I read about brewing kombucha made it sound like you had to be in a white laboratory, 
you know, gloves, white gloves. It sounded like you had to have this seriously, um, what's the word? Like a clean room. For those of you who know what a clean room is, uh, a room that was like a laboratory or, or like a surgery room where it was airtight and, and controlled air and environment. I found that was a little bit extreme, but I didn't figure it out right away. It actually kept me from trying for a while because I was a little concerned that I had a dog, there was dog fur, my dad's not as clean in the kitchen as I am, sterile, thank you for the word, that was a word I was looking for. And as it is, I will clean up the counters just because I know that whenever you, if you don't wipe down counters and things like that, you're, you're breeding ground for bacteria and molds and all sorts of stuff. I mean, would you lick the counters? That's how clean I want my stuff. I want it lickable. And you know I lick everything, so that's the deal. So going back to when I started this, I started in a small jar, just like this, to create my first SCOBY. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna try this because I've never done it before. And I think I can still do this despite all of this talk about sterile environments. And what I found, even the people that'll tell you you can't do kombucha in the same room as kimchi along with sauerkraut or cheeses, like it it's, it's, depends on you. They claim, some things I read claim that they, they, the, all the different ferments will, will affect each other and it will, it'll throw each other off, but I don't even think that's true. I don't believe it's true. Because after I did it and I got my SCOBY started and I started brewing my kombucha, I realized what a bunch of hogwash. It doesn't need to be that sterile. You just got to keep it clean and free of dust and dirt and all that. And that's not so, that's not always sterile. It's just clean. You know, you just clean environment. You know, it's not like you're putting your dog's paw in there or, or brushing the fur into it. You just keep it covered and clean, making sure it's getting the air it needs, making sure it's away from sunlight. Same thing with the kimchi and all that. Because of that, I've read so many different things about how you, you need to have this this way and you need to do this this way. And I personally just do it, try it. You know what? Sometimes somebody else's advice is just their own fear of stepping out of the comfort zone or, you know, like sometimes we take extra precautions, right? Kind of like that when you drive your car. There are people that are so extra cautious, they actually get in more accidents as a result, don't you think? or cause them, right? So there's extremes. You can go too extra cautionary and you can go no caution, throwing it to the wind. Life is about finding your happy balance, your happy medium. So what works for one per person isn't gonna work for another. And it's all good. It's all perfect. So again, you know, we need to get those numbers up, y'all. So we've got it off of the sides. That's the key. This is gonna go in the recycling. <coughs> Excuse me. Need to drink more water. See, the sun is shining today. Our weather's been so funky these past few days. We went under, under 40 degrees. We went to 30 degrees the other morning. My fig tree's lost all of its leaves. I'm hoping it's okay. I, I think one night is not going to kill it, is what I was reminded. Um, yeah, this could be the solution, um, but I won't know right away. So this is the key. You have to like let it sit for a little bit, and I'm going to see what happens. Because maybe, maybe the cayenne ends up being the, a key in cleaning out the cleaning out that yeast. Maybe it'll kill off the yeast. I'm kind of curious because. I would want to know if that works. So now it's no longer white on top because I cleaned around the edges, although I think I need to do it again. I will do that later so you don't have to sit here watching me doing it. But this is the ideal bottle of kimchi. And I want to say that that's the other one with the white is the original first kimchi, actually. This is the second bottle I created. And I have cabbage in the refrigerator. I can chop up some more cabbage. You wanna see how I chop up my cabbage? I usually will add more cabbage and more um, garlic and ginger to it as well. 
And I also like the, uh, the red pepper flakes and the cayenne pepper. The two really give it that kick. In fact, I need to add more cayenne to this one because I realized I don't think I added cayenne to this one. I have really played and had fun with the flavors on this. Gosh, that smells so good. That's about a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper. Yummy. Yummy, yummy in my tummy. What do I do? I shake it all about and you do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Okay. Fry yay, fry yay. What are y'all doing this weekend? Are you gonna get out in nature? Are you gonna move that body? It's physical Friday, so you should be moving your body today, don't you think? Kimchi, kimchi baby, kimchi, hot and spicy. What I really want to do though, truly, I do want to chop up some more of the cabbage. And maybe I'll throw in some garlic and some more ginger because that's actually a really good idea to do right now. I have the red cabbage here. I picked up leeks the other day. You know what, let's throw in some leek. Let's get leaky, leaky in the house. How motivated are y'all today? What are you going to do this weekend? Let's juice it up. Okay, no, not necessarily juice it up. Laundry mat. I tell you what, rather walk on the beach. I hear you. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do, but you also got to make find, find that time for you to do what you need to do for you. Sometimes the laundry can wait. I know mine does sometimes. I got three leaks, but I'm only gonna do. Um, you can use the liquid, Carl, and drink it. It may be too spicy, it may not be. It depends on you. I make a what what sauce that Tom loves, and I gotta keep up with it because he's already finished off. This is what was the last batch of what what sauce. I need to make more. And I don't have any, I need to get tahini and I need to use some of that liquid. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna use one of these leeks, I'm gonna chop it up, not all of it, but some of it and put it in with the kimchi as well. Hmm, oopsie. I got all sorts of goodies in here. We got lots of avocados, lots of nanners. Bags, speaking of nanners. Have y'all ever had Manzano bananas. These are so good. But you gotta wait till they're super ripe. Are they not ripe yet? Not yet. They are good. They're like apples and bananas mixed. Their, their nickname is uh, apple bananas, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. People talk about those in Kauai all the time. But they're a lot of work to, to peel all the little ones because they're a lot smaller. But they're definitely worth it. Might be, might be able to eat one. Hey y'all, I want, I want to show y'all something. Check this out, this is in the group, okay? And you have to play, because this is your digital playground and we're gonna <coughs> play. So, if you had to choose, you only get four, okay? You only get four choices. Which one of these has to go? Pepsi, Kool-Aid, tea, or coffee? Which one has to go? It has to go. So you have to, so if you had to drink three of these in one day, if you had to drink three of these, which one would you not drink? This is the stuff that I love in the group because it makes people think, you know, and it's playful and it's fun. I also want to read an introduction. I'll just flip through here. Oh, and by the way, no external links, y'all. Um, and I made an announcement. <clears throat> Anyone, this is a lot of work, y'all. And so, you know, I'm not perfect, <clears throat> but I'm trying my best to keep this group safe. And so, as of, this is not gonna be, it. it's popular for some people, but it's not so popular for others. But uh, I don't care, because it's our group and I gotta make sure that everybody's safe. Is that come February 1st, this February 1st, in like, I don't know, 12, 13 days, 
anyone that is promoting MLM on any of their social media, if it's Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook page, first big per, uh, Facebook personal, they're going to be removed from the group. Okay. So, um, you know, if you're part of an MLM and you don't promote it in social media, that's fine. But if I see anything or anybody else reports that you are promoting an MLM or you're a direct distributor for anything, you know, unfortunately, we're going to have to remove you from the group. Y'all, there's thousands of groups out there. Um, this group just is not for you just because I get a lot of messages saying people, you know, message them saying, here, try this oil, try this snake oil, try this. You know, I believe that there are some valuable um, products. Um, or services through MLMs. Um, it's just I know how that all works and I just want to protect our rock and rad stars. So if you're a part of any MLM and you promote it on social media, you can just take yourself out of the group. Um, and if you notice after February 1st that you're not in the group, that is why. MLM stands for multi-level marketing or affiliate marketing. Um, there's it used to be called pyramid schemes. They just keep changing the name. Unfortunately, both of us have been involved in those. And I know from my experience, I got suckered in one year to five of them. And I I was so mad at myself in the situation because I felt like each time I'm like, dang, they got me again. I thought I liked the products. And in the end, the products really weren't that big, that great. And me having to buy into being and trying to, it just it, to me, it didn't feel very, it didn't align with my ethics and my integrity. It just felt like very sleazy and slimy for me because ultimately I want to be able to promote healthy living. I don't want you to feel like you have to buy something from me. Right. Okay. And I want to give one shout out. This is for Colleen Isa. Isa. She finally, y'all, you know, decided to introduce herself. She had some trouble. I was working with her yesterday uh, trying to get this video on there. She finally created a video introducing herself and she really upped you know, ups her vulnerability and tells her story. And she, she didn't go live, but she uploaded a video. You all friend, follow, and support her. I love how true and how correct she came. Um, it takes a lot to tell your story, even if it's just in text, even if it's in a photo. But to do it live or to go, you know, on video like that, y'all, that this is what the group is for. Everyone is welcome. Tell your story. Tell us, you know, an introduction, whatever it is that you want to talk about. As long as you're kind and you want to have an open conversation and you're willing to respect everybody's opinion and not attack them. Don't call a murderer. Don't judge them. You know, and again, you can mute them. If you don't like her story, just hit mute and block her and then you're fine to stay. OK, but shout out to Colleen, Isa. I love you. We love you. I understand how hard that is. And um, I appreciate you, y'all. Exhale only love. But what? You know, chop up some cabbage. And, and truly, like we say, it's, it's all about when you show up for yourself. And that takes a lot of courage. That's why it's so important to reach within and find the compassion and passion for others. If you're someone who labels yourself as belonging to certain groups... I have to admit for myself, I will not use a label to define my lifestyle or who I am because it, it will never ever fit who I am as a unique expression of my soul of who I am, which is why too often when we say I'm paleo, I'm, I'm an omnivore, a carnivore, I'm, I'm vegan, I'm this, I'm a vegetarian, I'm a pescatarian, I'm, I'm this or that, I'm an animal lover, blah, blah, blah. You open yourself up for criti criticism and attack. And so that's why we want you to be ridiculously or authentically who you are. One of the things I found is that my imposing my views on someone else is not being compassionate to myself or others. So I love to hear your stories. Both Tom and I read them and we just, we, we, we really just like feel it in our hearts. That's the whole purpose of this group. And we want you to feel embraced and loved and honored for where you're at no matter where it is we're not going to judge you because we've been there you know and most of us are judging ourselves first before we're judging someone else and then we're pro pro projecting even more judgment upon others because we are so hard on ourselves so find the compassion within and be kind to yourself first and recognize kindness is what matters most when you show up for you and you then you can show up for others but only when one when it's asked from you. <clears throat> so we got this beautiful purple cabbage. Look at this gorgeous design. Does anybody just stop and stare at the the beauty? <coughs> Look at this. Oh, 
all of this intricate design, this weaving, you know, Fibonacci, the sacred geometry, the numbers, the, 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 the whole thing. Like people, do you do this with your food? I do because to me, this is true nature. This is art. It's gorgeous. It's so pretty. I want to see. Isn't that pretty? That is art. It's like, it's so abstract and, and I can see flowers in it. I can see tongues in it. I mean, yeah, I go there. Look at this. That is rad, huh? It's dimensional. Okay. Like, it's not, it's exactly, Karen, you can make, it looks like you can make a stamp out of it. It's so pretty. It is pretty. It is pretty. Everything is art. Don't remember that. Or don't remember that. Remember that. And watch your verbiage. Do you use a lot of negative talk or do you use a lot of like neutral, positive reinforcement? If somebody were to ask you what it is you want, stop and catch yourself if you're using the I don't want this or I don't want that because you have to focus in on the what you want and not the process of elimination through your verbiage, right? And you know what? If somebody labels you, give it no attention. It's none of your business because you're gonna grow more when you just not allow that to enter your sphere. It's truly, people's opinions, you know, I said this the other day, opinions are like buttholes. Everybody's got one, and we're all speaking through our buttholes. Just saying. So again, is it kind, is it necessary, is it gonna serve uplifting and supportive of someone else? Did you just use the word butthole? Where'd Tiggy go? Did you see him? Was Tiggy in here? Mm -hmm. And I think I heard you use the word butthole. You know what? I think butthole is such a funny word. I have to tell the story. One time there was this old man and I was sitting at a bus stop and this old man and another guy were getting a fight and he literally looked at this guy and said, stop being a butthole. And I'm like, that's probably one, one, of, the, one of the funniest <laughs> things you can call somebody, like, whatever, butthole. It's like, who's, like, when, like, in 1600, did someone, like, you're such a butthole. Like, that's, <laughs> like... Well, Beavis and Butthead used it, didn't they? I know, but why, like, have you ever looked at somebody, like, whatever, butthole? Like... I don't know that I can, I can't say I didn't, though. Calling people I buttholes, that doesn't really... I had a friend, I had somebody used to say, bunghole. Bunghole. Or bungholio. Well, that was buttholio, or bungholio, or... What did they say on, on Beavis and Butthead? There was some... I, I, I Cornholio. Cor Cornholio? Cornholio. <gasps> so funny. I was not a big fan. It just happened to be that in the day room in the dormitories when I lived in Omaha, Nebraska, and I was stationed there, my room was right next to the dormitory uh, day room. And so the TV would be on, and the guys would be all in there watching Beavis and Butthead. I'm like, oh, my God. It was funny, but it was more guy humor, in my opinion. And I just was like... We watch something else but uh it was it was comical i see now there's an interesting story so when i was stationed in omaha nebraska all the guys apparently and i'm serious i was seriously yeah usually i use the a word as well but you know i was being i'm, I'm kind of like not needing to use that so i'm very oblivious and so i never really always notice when someone's interested in me but apparently somebody once told me you do know why all the guys hang out in the day room right they're all waiting to see who's going to get to go to dinner with you. Like, apparently the guys would wait out there and then I'd get asked for dinner or something like that. I didn't always go because maybe I wasn't interested in the guy, but I, I had a lot of guy friends as a result of that. Um, it was comical. Uh, I, I, met, I met at least two boyfriends that way. If you can share this video in groups, that would be fantastic, especially any groups that you can think of that could benefit from fermentation, dehydration, uh, spread, spread the love. Um, you know what? I don't know. Anybody could benefit from these videos. I just don't know how because I'm not the person who's going to benefit. So sharing is caring. Spread the love on that share button. Share it in groups. Share it on your personal page. Share it wherever you think it's going to serve. You know, there's anxiety groups out there, depression groups, military groups. I'm a, I'm a former veteran. I was in the Air Force for over 10 years. Tom was also in the Navy. I think he said four years. Right? Powerful stuff. 
It's, it's a whole different lifestyle, let me tell you right now. I just washed my leak. I'm leakfully clean. Not zestfully clean, I'm leaky clean. I'm leaky clean, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Are you leaky clean today, y'all? <sighs> Thank you, Rebecca, I appreciate you. We appreciate all the love that you spread. We appreciate your showing up and just hanging and rap, watching us rap. And it's, it's just a big, happy family now, isn't it? And if anybody wants to go live with me here, let me know. We can invite you, maybe. You just have to have that little button so I can invite you. I think I can still invite people. I've not done it in a while. So now we're gonna cut up some leek. I'm very limited for space in this container. I didn't put a lot of water in it because I was, I can see that more stuff is gonna create a, a higher line. So we get out the trusty knife. And what I do, and here's a, kit, here's a tip. You could throw this in gardening groups too, by the way. Here's why. Because I haven't even cleaned this up. What is that from? Okay, that's from leeks. I love leeks. It's like an onion. If you cut off this top, you can stick this in. See, there's roots. You can either put it in a short cup of just enough water to cover the roots and keep putting water in it so it doesn't dry out. Or you can put it in a pot. It will grow. If you saw the other day when I made the video outside with Tom, I have leeks growing back there. They're skinny. They're not as robust as this one but they're growing in my backyard because you just take it and you just replant it. A lot of fruits and vegetables that you get at the store, you can plant the seeds, you can plant the, the base, the stalk, you can plant the roots in the ground, and you're gonna get, just stick this piece right here. If I put that in, see where my little cup is. This is all you do. A little cup like this, I'm just going to put a little bit of water and just put that in there and look at this. Check this out. Love action. Creating, maintaining, and continuing the cycle of life. Simple, simple stuff, people. But we do, we think about doing that. Like if you, if there was a crisis and you couldn't go out and buy food, but you had some stuff in your house, would you be able to find a way to survive living off the land again? It's taking baby steps, right? So even like the peppers, I, I cut up peppers the other day. My compost, I expect all sorts of stuff to be sprouting out of it next year. This, these seeds from the peppers, this was a yellow pepper. Throw those out in the dirt. You'd be surprised, that stuff will grow. I've done it. <coughs> I find cilantro out in my, my, comp, my uh, pots and I didn't, even, I didn't even plant the cilantro. I have parsley in the pots that I did plant and then I have, like I said, I have leeks. Hi, leeks. I mean, hi, honey. Is, is that a, um, that's like a sister or a cousin of the onion, any type of onion, right? Of the, of the scallion variety the type. Sky, okay. I believe, the, the green onions. Those are really good, like in soups and stews, too. Yeah. 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 Hmm. So now, Feeling like I need something in my. Oh, I need to the hot water, didn't I? I kept doing that. I kept going to heat the water and forgetting to put it in the big in my my cup my teacup. Thank you, Carl. Truly appreciate it. So I like to cut it like this, little circles. You don't have to cut it in circles. You can cut it up so it's like half circles. Just depends on how you want it to come out of your kimchi. So I've also got in there, um, I've done red onions in the kimchi. I've done white onions in the kimchi. In fact, I still have a white onion left over. I need to get more onions now that I think about it because I, I only got three onions the other day. I don't eat onions as much as I used to because one of the things I've found for myself, some people have allergies to alums, the onions and the garlic, and so that's why I prefer the asafoetida because if I have too much onion, it causes um, some mouth reactions where it gets really raw. 
and I get little it's just an interesting thing that happens in my mouth and I love onions y'all no you don't you can put vinegar in your kimchi but I don't I mean I might just to, to neutralize the pH in it but it's not necessarily something you need in there Now the ideal way to, to also, you can also use the green, this is this whole thing is edible, but a lot of times people go, oh, I don't know, it doesn't look as appealing, and again, we eat with our eyes, and we're very much influenced by media. Um, I don't know if you all saw this, but years ago, the French started saying no more waste of food, because what they would do is only put out the pretty food, the pretty produce. But they put out, started putting out the ugly produce and allowing people to buy it at a discount so that they're not wasting food. Because that's one of the biggest problems we have is we waste food. If you go to grocery stores, they throw that stuff out. They don't give it away all the time. You have to know. Some places you can get it from, but they, give, they, they get rid of so much that goes in the garbage. That's not even composted. Isn't that disgusting? I see you with my spying eye. Sneaking on by. Oh, Buddy's even sneaking on by. So checky check, check it out. I actually did half and half. I love leeks. I think they're delicious. Oh yeah, I've got apple cider or apple juice in the refrigerator right now that a girlfriend gave me. So this is gonna go in the kimchi. I'm gonna put more in there. I just want to see if I can put some of this part, the top part, in there now. I, I usually will trim off the very top just in case any type of um, bad areas. Like sometimes I get bad areas. Like if if you get a leak and it's not like really really good like that and it's kind of yellowing, it's starting to starting to uh, die off. <coughs> Uh uh, watch this. 40, bye. See how good he is? He even understands Italian. That's impressive. That's how I know my angel's with him. Good boy. Thank you, buddy. Buddy's my little watcher. Like when I'm in the kitchen, he hangs out and he watches me in the kitchen. Sometimes he'll lay right over the threshold of the kitchen door, knowing. I know I'm not supposed to be in the kitchen, but it's the closest I can get. And the closer I get, I feel like I've accomplished something special. And he's a sweet food. Plus, when it's sunny outside, you know, like, I do want to walk him, take him for a walk, but I don't know that it's going to get cold, warm enough. So. And these colors are just so vibrant. And I love kimchi because it's like, it preserves all the vibrancy of the food and you get just such a nice flavor from the combination, the mixes, and you can use it in all sorts of, you can throw it in a salad. You can use kimchi as a starter for nut and seed cheeses, which I do, or coconut cheese. And I've done that as well, so it imparts that spiciness. Because it has that probiotic culture. Wait till you see how pretty this green is. Love, love, love this. Looky, looky. Can y'all see how pretty that is? Awesome sauce. That is leek. Get leaky. Okay, maybe not be leaky, but you know, get your leakies on. <laughs> So that, I'm gonna put some in the other jar. Throw it on top. Coconut cheese, Karen. Oh yeah, I got some of that in the fridge too and that needs to be seasoned. I'm gonna actually cut up the rest of that because I wanna put it in all the kimchi containers. coconut cheese. So I'm going to stop this for just a moment to pull out my coconut cheese. It's 
hidden back here. So right here, I have this coconut cheese. This is just plain coconut cheese. There's no flavoring to it. It's more like a sour cream, but a very thick sour cream actually. And that's kind of hard on top. It's got a tart, like salty flavor to it. It's a little sweet. It's actually really good. I'm cleaning off. It's very cool because the first time my girl, years ago when I was first learning about all these whole food plant-based re recipes, this using raw uh, produce and food in its natural state, rich in enzyme. Yes, like a creme fraiche, very similar. Let me tell you, that was one of my favorite things in France. I'd go to Paris and I that's what I'd have for dessert because I love that combo of the, the creme fraiche with the, um, what's the, the other one they give you? They, is it like a cottage cheese kind of, but it's called something else. The creme fraiche and that with like some honey. Oh my gosh, it was like, one had a sweetness and the other one had like a sour. Coconut based cheese is, is really good. You can use nuts as well. I don't do soy personally because I find it has its issues. Unless it's fermented, I won't. Mm. Oh, that's so good. So what I really need to do with this and what I, my girlfriend suggested in the beginning when I was first learning about what you can do is take some of that curry powder, a little bit of salt, and then mix it up and make a curry cheese. Coconut curry cheese, y'all. Very good stuff. And you can get herbs, fresh herbs, and mix them in. You can do all sorts of neat little uh, creations. You know, like, hey, throw this into a cheese connoisseur's group. Garlic and herb, exactly. You chop up some garlic, some herbs, and you throw it all in. Or you can even do like a roll, I've done that as well, where you just take the cheese, you form it, and you put all the herbs around it. I've done that. I was speaking the other day about how I made a chestnut cheese years ago, and I had two different flavors, and the inside of it was very much like the camembert or like the gorgonzola. Yeah, and you can use whatever you want. That's the beauty, is just play in your kitchen. Try whatever you can conco concoct in your mind. Put it into a creation that you, you do. Oh, hey, Bolden, how are you? Thank you for tuning in. First time, sweet, popping cherries. Aw, thank you, Flora, we love you too. We've got some amazing rock and rad stars up in our group, and if you don't know about our group, you want to pop on over and introduce yourself. Everybody shows up and supports one another. <clears throat> Every once in a while, people's feathers get ruffled, and it's all good because you know what? If you, how are you going to grow otherwise? If you aren't challenged at some point in your life, then you're just, you know, maybe you're not growing. We all need to evolve and not everything is going to stay the same because change is constantly occurring. Most of the times we don't notice it unless it's something very extreme. But it's always happening, always around us. This is fun. I love this. Ooh. Where can you get what? Did I miss something? Did I miss something in the comments? Cranberries look good to me. Yeah, I don't know if you can get coconut yogurt. Um, I'm sure there's different types of, uh, not yogurt, coconut cheese out there. I know there's uh, all sorts of different brands. I don't know which ones use the coconut off the top of my head. I avoid when I go out and sometimes I get a little lazy and I try other people's brands, they usually use the base of cashews or I've seen um, I've seen soy, but I won't touch the soy. Cashews, almonds, I've seen almond based. 
I think it's more fun making your own, but that's that's my opinion. Because I feel like when you have control over your food and you're making it yourself, you can infuse so much more love into it, right? And it becomes your own, and then it's your own creation. And of course, whenever you create something, you're creating your own, you know, shot of happy hormones again. And it's like I said, stepping out of your comfort zone is exercising that that muscle of courage, and and that's a that's actually healthy. Doing things new, do something every day you've never done before. That's where we'll grow the most. Oh. I'm having fun with this, let me tell you. The colors, and I just really like these green stripes on the side of the leeks. It's so vibrant. Look at that, how pretty that is. Bolden, we appreciate you too, and I'm telling you, once you get into the group and you just introduce yourself, if you have the courage to go live, we even love that more, um, but we know that everybody's at the, their point where, you know, maybe you will later, you know, you, we're just excited to have you all. Last one. Okay, now, I really want to cut these and make sure that they're all kind of... These are so pretty. Look at the vibrancy of these colors. Do y'all like really admire your food? I mean, this is nature. Nature makes this stuff. We don't have to do anything except for maybe treat her with a little bit of, oh, she's falling all the place. I'm really just appreciating what we have. You know what I really like about this? The colors and how just like um, a watermelon, the closer you get to the, the rind, the saltier it gets, and the further away you get, the least salty it gets, same thing with this, right? Mm -hmm. It's a completely different flavor of the green color of the rainbow, right? Which one do you prefer best? I like them both. It's really, really strong when you get that, that one right there. You should probably feel it right up in your nose. I love that. I like both of it. And then if you chew this, it's not as spicy. Talk about medicinal just this by itself. Mm -hmm. Put this in tea, put it in a soup. You know, whatever you want to do to get that. I mean, it clears as your sign. Wow, it kicks you, you know. <laughs> yeah, I was it's waiting great, for that. <laughs> right? Isn't that oh, that's young? beautiful, honey. Yeah. I need to get you a, a chef's knife. You tell me about your knife that you um, tried to break and she tried to super glue it too with Gorilla Glue. She tried to save it, but uh, we'll get her another one. You'll kick my butt, but I have a chef's knife by hiding in the drawer because I don't I usually like to use my ceramic knives. And the thing is, a chef's knife requires taking care of it and cleaning it properly and using the sharpening stone, which I don't have. So I really need the sharpening stone to maintain the chef's knife that I have hiding. Leaky baby. <laughs> dee -dee -dee. I had a dee -dee, dee moment. Do y'all ever have a dee -dee, dee moment? Dee -dee -dee. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I'm also going to cut up the ginger over here. I got a whole lot of really cool straws. Do you like glass straws? These are the raddest. So, like, we have the really cool one. Glass. And these all have colors on the end. It's like, I don't know, maybe more in here. There's one with green. Then we got more of the 
angled straws. Y'all know we like purple and green. That's our ridiculous, ridiculously authentic colors, right? Oh, wait, that's red. I thought it was purple. It looked purple. We got a pretty yellow golden one. We got wooden spoon spatulas. My sister had sent me one that's actually straight, so I've got one of those in there somewhere. Oh, there it is. And it's skinnier. It's a itty bitty. So this one my sister sent me, it's tiny compared, it, I think it, it almost fits inside of the other ones are so big. Even these are, are like, I got itty bitty mouth, so I like to sip slowly. Just me. Itty bitty. Metal oxidizes, that's the only reason I probably don't use it as much as I should. I need a Something's inspiring me to speak a little louder, though, so you can hear me well. So, I'm just being gentle and loving with the food as I put, prepare. I'm putting 
leaks in both of these kimchi so that they get leaky. And then I just love the colors. The colors are absolutely gorgeous. Ah, Karen, I could use a clay mask pore cleaning myself. But, well, maybe not so much because my skin's kind of dry. Do you have a lot of humidity where you're at? Oh, bubble bath meditation. Don't you miss that? We have got to get that one back on the show, on the program. You know that Tom and I initially both, he started it. He started it in a good way. And uh, somehow we, he convinced me to go split screen a few times. And then I was doing some bubble bath meditations. That was the raddest, wasn't it, honey? Oh, look what he brought. <laughs> Hold on, let me cover the kimchi <coughs> and the food because we don't want it on the food. We don't want that in there. Karen, what part of Florida are you in? Okay, he's going to spray me down. So this is what I do every morning. This is the helichrysum. Yep, that's a helichrysum. Helichrysum is extremely good for healing. Three. You can get closer to my face next time, because otherwise it's going everywhere but on my face. You gotta get it right up in there. Ooh, Orlando, you're not very far. We're in Clearwater. That one is chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum actually, strange but true fact I learned, it's, it was used as um, a libido enhancement. So it's an aphrodisiac, y'all. If you didn't know, what what? Buddy's the one who taught me that. I'm just saying. Ready? Bring it on, baby. Ah, oh, what, what? Mm, I can feel oh, the excitement in my, my loins already. So I love you. I really like this brand and this is also the same brand as I washed my hair this morning and the Alafia, um, I love neem. Neem is extremely healing. It's really good for, for parasites and fleas and things like that. And if you have scalp conditions, neem I highly um, recommend. It's really good on the face for scarring and all that too. Bring it baby. Ah. Uh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, and boom. boom, what, what? Oh, he forgot the bottles. That's okay. So, if you do this, it, it helps to penetrate the epidermis. And we're not talking like poof, poof, slap in your face. It's like just to stimulate. And it, so it gets absorbed. And it's a nice little facial massage, too, especially. Ah. Oh. Sometimes I do this for Tom. And he gets a whole face and heads. He, he basically, I get his whole head weight in my hands. It's the cutest thing. He's like, ah. Because what I do is I'll go up in here. This is really helpful. You take your, your index fingers and you rub and sp spread apart here up by the third eye point. This is really good for the pituitary gland. And you can like just massage and pull the skin down. <sighs> You know, just move and ooh. Do you know the finger, your fingertips correspond to the different areas of the brain? And that each fingertip is associated with a different planet. And each planet represents a different area of, let's say, thumbs are Earth. Earth is about your security, stability, being grounded, materialism, physical manifestation. Jupiter's expansion, wisdom, right? You can also go back into your scalp or rubbing your ears, you know? You three times really stimulate. It's, it's moving energy. It's really good for you, really. 
I want to do it. Middle finger is Saturn, which is the lesson taskmaster. Like, how do, well do you learn your lessons if you keep repeating them? That's why you don't wear finger rings on your middle fingers. Nobody needs any more lessons, right? And then, <laughs> hubba hubba baby. And then, again, another one. Oh, Wait. you want me to do it to you? <laughs> Wait, let me finish the fingers. Then you got vitality, which is... Uh, which planet is vitality? It's the sun, y'all, and I'm a Leo. So that's where your energy, activity. Pinky finger is Mercury. Communication, baby. How do you express yourself? Right? So then you get your mas masculine, then your feminine side. Well, here we go. Watch this and tell me you don't feel I this. I don't know. You might need to sit on the bucket. I'm squatting. It's physical Friday. It's going to take a little bit. It's going to be fun. I always Wait, here's the best part. This part I love. He does this every time before I spray him and do this. So you have to like, you have to open up my eyeballs as far as I can. And I'm not kidding because I, I... He pops the air out of it, basically. You know, one time I read that men have less wrinkles in their face because when they shave, you know, they stretch their face out. But for me, before I get sprayed... I gotta open up all my eyelids and it takes a while. He taught me this. I, this is actually really good. This is face exercises, people. This is good for you. And it's even more entertaining when you get to watch but this. The thing is, I'm not trying to be funny. And then no, I'm ready. Not. Now I'm ready. Go. No, keep it off. You gotta tuck it up just about here, though. There you go. Because you gotta get the really good. You know how you like it, baby. Check this out. Tell me you don't feel this. <coughs> and you just gotta people call it the third eye like I go like when I meditate I go to that third eye thing and I just let it but I just let it, let it and linger. he does he, he and you had to let it linger okay it's good. but I only like I only want three sprays sometimes she'll overdo it and give me like 16 60 ninja sprays I'm like okay I didn't want to take a bath so just three and every time I see three she still does four or five but I don't say anything because I'm all relaxed you see those extra thick is she does, I just want three. Now watch, let's see if she does three. She'll give me five. I'm like, okay, I, I would. Madonna says she. I could have just taken a bath, right? <laughs> I read an article, Madonna said, I spray rose petal water on people when they're being a-holes. Yeah, well. And it changes the energy. because That's the same thing as a butthole, but how polite is that? Yeah, whatever, butthole. <laughs> like, what does that mean? Hey, just spray them. You don't even have to call them anything. Three sprays, please. Showing you, baby. I think I'm gonna have to like do some trimming too. Yes, we have these kind of conversations. I think the best part is just massaging his face because he really gets into it. Like, literally, he next thing I know, I'm holding his head up. He just did that. He's holding a pose. But Rufus and all. Gonna get on up in there. Get that cranial sacral work going. It's good for you. I mean, like if you have somebody, a partner who's able and willing to do this it's super special like these are the little things you know what he does for me sometimes he tells me how warm my back up back is and he's he, he comes up behind me <laughs> he's like oh your back is so warm i could stay here all night <laughs> well not really but thank you bold and hope to see you in the group soon read your introduction One eye open. Thank you. You're welcome. He melts off into the other room. Healing hands, touching hands, touching you. 
Well, I'm still working on the kimchi. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so, again, how we doing? How you doing out there? Normally I know what time it is, because, but this phone for some reason is just not telling me it's all good. So we need some garlic and some ginger, and we're going to add that to the mix, because it's really important to have like the mix of the flavors, hot and spicy, keeping it kind of do that whenever something hits the floor. We also have more of the cabbage, which needs to go in there big time. Garlic. It's, it's kind of nice if I get bigger pieces, but it's not good if I don't. I compost everything, so I have like my little compost container. Whoops, that too. That needs to go to somebody. So, like everything, I just reuse the plastic bins, and then when those are done and I change it up, I, I throw them in the co in the recycling. So right now, I've got my garlic, aglio in Italian. Garlic, it's organic. <sighs> now, some people will use the skins, and you know how in the end there's that little piece. You don't have to clip that. Where's my knife? There we go. But you can. I mean, a lot of times I do. Sometimes I don't. Just depends on my mood. I got two more little pieces. Probably gonna need more than that. I love when I get chunks of garlic and the ginger from the kimchi when I when I pour it out. To me, that's like, ooh, extra goody bits. I've always been a huge garlic and uh, onion fan. Quick and easy dish when I was young, when I was living in Italy, in Naples, Italy, <clears throat> when I was kind of lazy, that was my lazy, quick and dirty dish, was spaghetti all'olio con peperoncino. <clears throat> so it would be, uh, you take the, well, you take the olive oil and you would uh, take the garlic minced up and cook it just enough to warm it, adding the, the peppers, the pepper flakes. Or you could even do the pepperoncino, really finely diced. So pepperoncino, for those of you who don't know it, is that really cool red spicy pepper that Naples, Italy is known for. So I would take all that and I'd mince it up and put it in the garlic oil. I'd make up the spaghetti and that's all you did was just add the the oil to the spaghetti, you know, toss it about, and yummy, just by itself. Salt and pepper, of course. Maybe not so much the pepper is, is definitely a little bit of salt. And man, oh man, let me tell you, that was my quick and dirty sometimes, especially when I was I was a big time runner back then, and I felt like I, you know, again, I, I, my understanding of what my body needed, I would think, well, I'm craving protein, so I'll have peanut butter. But you know what? We think a craving means our body needs what it is we crave, and that's not always the truth. It could be an indication of low magnesium, potassium, and you needing to put something whole in your body that your body can assimilate. But a lot of times it's the memory craving that we crave than anything else. And now I'm just chopping up the... Uh, yeah, you could... I guess you could do that with the zoodles. Now, in the case of, you know, like you could heat up the the oil and all that. I don't know if you'd need to. You wouldn't even need to. You just need a, like a pepperoncino spiced um, uh, oil. You know how like the herb, herb infused olive oil? That way you're not going rancid either. Because back then I didn't realize there's a... There's a heat point for olive oil that you don't want to ruin or lose it. What are you going for up there? What are you reaching? Oh, he's spreading the love. Spread the love on that share button is what he's he's pointing out, right? I want to keep hearing your story though. That's the piece that you were talking about. So Kelly was asking, I'm sure you could easily just get a, a infused oil or make your own, which is the ideal, 
and then just pour that with the zoodles. You know what, that's a good idea. It would be totally different though because unless you you uh, saute up the garlic, it's gonna be much more str much stronger, a little different of a flavor because you know that the cooked garlic tastes totally different than the raw garlic. So that would be something. Let me know if you try that. I don't use um, olive oil as much, but I do have it. I brought some back from Portugal and it seems to still be all right. It's kind of hidden back here. My dad and I went to this um, place called Matus. And for those of you who know any Portuguese wine, um, Matus was known for their port. And they don't own this casa anymore, but this, this place was incredible. The wood, and I can't remember which one it was, that they used to build the structure of the, the, the castle, this beautiful structure that we went and toured, is termite resistant. Like it naturally, termites won't eat it. And it just was gorgeous, very simple. So this is a superior high and it's kept in, in the house. The color is gorgeous. I was gonna use some the other day on the Brussels sprouts that I, I prepared, but in the end, it tasted so good we didn't end up using it. I will be very curious to hear how that turns out for you, Kelly. I love hearing what y'all do. So I'm real quick gonna put this in a big, Actually, it needs to go in the, well, I'm going to put it on the top of one of them. Aw, oh, thank you, Flora. Thank you for sticking around as long as you have. We know we can go. I, I've gone four hours on a live before. If you've ever seen me, I'm, it's easy for me to do because I can just keep on wrapping. I haven't pulled an all-nighter in a while, but I did one time where I was just going through boxes while I was rearranging things, and OMG, like, it was really cool because then you start going through boxes and you have stories. So my stories would come up. I'm like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot. Uh, that part the particular all-nighter that I'm thinking of, I pulled out some of my old medals from running my marathons in Paris and Florence, and that was kind of rad because... I didn't remember some of the pictures and things that I had still. Okay, so there's that. I'm really having fun with this because to me, it's, I'm gonna show you this, this is so pretty. Look at how pretty this is. Look at the color contrast. I mean, seriously, real food. Real, we're getting real up and in here. these loosely on the top. The other thing is I'm going to cut up more ginger too, but first I'm going to just do these. So if you didn't see my video yesterday, um, I had done a video on my personal page and it, it was kind of comical because I was trying, first off, I was trying to share the reason I feel that Tom is such an amazing marketer um, and an awareness in his, his social media. He, like, I don't know that anybody could do the stuff that he's done because that's like. Carry on. <laughs> he is amazing. You know what that looked like from the side for a second? It just didn't look good. Carry on, I was liking what you were talking about. I, I love you so much. I first encountered Tom through Facebook. He found me, and I was sharing that. <laughs> I was doing my morning meditation one morning. I was struggling with trying to get my retreat filled to take people to Italy and have an ecstatic awakening with me using Kundalini yoga and opening to their body awareness. And I just had to finally say, you know what, I don't, I know I can't do this all myself. I, I, do, I'm not, I can. I can suffer through trying to do everything myself or I can just surrender and allow and ask, please send me somebody that knows how, what I need to do and has a, a vision and can guide me. So all of a sudden I start getting these messages and it probably went on. I, I don't even know how I friended him and how I said yes because I'm pretty selective and I had close to f between four and 5,000 people on my friends list. And 
this cool cat over here sending me voice messages. And I'm like, dude, it's taking time. I mean, he's like really saying stuff, like not just in a text, which is a good way to keep a barrier, but to open up the dialogue with a voice memo to me, to me, that was a little, that was an extra special touch. So I didn't get a chance to get back to him right away because I was busy with all my yoga stuff and I, I said, you know what, I'll get back to him when I can sit and devote the time to figure this out. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome, Kelly. You found me on Instagram. That is sweet. See, I didn't realize that. And that's the cool thing is when you all tell us, how did we find each other? It's a beautiful sim synchronicity of how we're being interwoven in this energetic field. So here he is over here sending me voice memos. And I finally just said, okay, he said something about doing a Facebook takeover. Like I'd been doing lives for now almost two years since they started this Facebook Live. And I knew I needed to do it and that my message could come out better if I was doing something live. So here he is saying something about doing a Facebook Live. And I'm like, takeover, what does that mean? I'm like, how am I supposed to show up in his kitchen up in North Dakota? Because first I'm like, wait a minute, how am I supposed to do that? Where is he? Like, I'm like looking around going, is he nearby? Does he see me? <laughs> I go, I go and I see these in North Dakota and I'm shaking my head going, how the heck is that supposed to work? Wasn't even thinking about the fact that I would have to log into his account versus go there. I didn't have to go there and show up in his kitchen. So I call, I, I contacted him back. I'm like, okay, well explain this stuff to me. And the first time he rapped, we rapped in a mem messenger. Did we do a video in messenger? He had this light on himself that kept dropping and kept changing his lighting. It was the funniest thing. I'm like, I don't know, understand. Why has he got a spotlight on his face? Oops. Anyway. And he told me his vision, and I shared a little of mine, and, and he told me some things. And I mean, I got it. It made sense to me because I mean, I would my I was an IT professional in my past life. And between you and me, as soon as I started doing this retreat stuff and creating my website, I was like, man, I really don't want to have to do this again. This is not the realm I want to go down. I know I can do it. I don't want to do it, and I don't want to go that deep into it. I had a friend who was supposed to help me with some things related to the website that would have taken that stress off, but it didn't work out. But that's the that's a blessing in how life works. This cat shows up in my life, and all of a sudden he's like, oh yeah, I've got all this access to the Facebook algorithms, and I know this stuff, and I study it day and night, and I know, and I know. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna trust this. And the first time I gave him the account, my account information, and he gave me his, and I'm like, holy crap. I'm like, okay. But what really, the reason I ended up having to contact him, oh, woo, the reason I had to contact him was because this Rob guy was asking to be friends with me and he had Tom's picture up on his wallpaper picture and then he had, they had flipped their profiles and I was really concerned that it wasn't a recreated fake account. That I know hurts. I know that hurts. Cause I can feel it. Thank you, sir. May I have another? <laughs> he does this hashtag Twinkies thing with me a lot. It usually means he can't handle it. So this Rob guy, I'm like asking, what is this all about first? And he goes, no, he's perfectly fine. He's, he's like a brother. I was like, okay. So I let him in. And then I said, like I said, I did a Facebook takeover on Tom's account. And that particular one was about time. And uh, it literally was about time, right? Like we have time, we made up time, all that. We should throw that out there again because I don't remember. Um, so then we just started rapping and co collaborating and doing, s when the split screen stuff came up on Facebook, it was kind of new. We started doing bubble bath meditations and things just unfolded. And I've been watching him, and I know how much work goes on behind the scenes, knowing the background of IT that I know. And I'm just shaking my head going, whoa, you know, some people are able to continue to do that. I did it for so long, it burnt me out. 
And there were times when we were creating the group and we were working on meal plans and doing all-nighters left and right that it was like we were in the same room together because we were f video messaging while he was working on one thing and, hey, what are you eating over there? Oh, you got almond butter and dates too, huh? Like, that's my all-time favorite. Now, let me tell you, those are the hardest things to keep in the house between the two of us. I'll do it. This did not last long. This did not last, I don't even know if it lasted a month in the house. I'm just saying. Look at that, nine pounds of, nine pounds of almond butter. Y'all, yeah, this is her in. bucket, I tell you. This is the funniest thing <laughs> ever. So we pay like $103 of this <laughs> almond butter because we love almond butter. And when we were done, I came to the kitchen and she was cleaning her bucket. And if y'all don't know, Lana's, Lana is powerful, meaning she, she doesn't like the, the word short. So we use the word powerful. And she's next level ninja cleaning this bucket. And when she was done, I put it on the floor because it's a perfect bucket for her to sit on. And she didn't think it was funny. But then when she was in the kitchen, putting avocados in the fit, kitchen, I put the bucket under there and she sat on the bucket. But see, y'all, I can do a yogic squat and stay in that position. It's just ironic that that basically is about the same side. You should see his feet are healed up really nicely after his first initial arrival here in Florida and running on those, uh, those sand spurs. Hey, and you gotta watch. When you slap a man on the booty, you gotta watch because if he has low hangers, you will hurt him. She's Not done that funny. to me twice. I hope I didn't just do that to you. Hashtag low hangers. <laughs> Hashtag Twinkies. Okay, so back to my water and tea because I did it again. I heated it and then I still didn't do anything with it. And because I'm kind of getting hungry. So back to this. The garlic has to go in the other one too. Ooh, the bananas in that is so good. I'm telling you, the fruit roll-up idea was the best idea I ever had. And it did, it turned out delicious. I probably don't even need chia seeds in them because they're so good. They just, they really don't require it. But to do the coffee is something special. And I still have a little bit in the fridge that I need to spread out because that that dehydrator only has five trays and I needed a sixth one. And that's okay. So now we need we need the ginger is also key to your kimchi. That's one thing I've learned. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna do four slices of it, so I know I'll do four. This one actually has a lot of spicy and garlic, and uh, and the ginger is all down the bottom of this. And that's okay. I know that's probably from where I poured it. So now when I got my bubbling water and I heard it this time because I kept getting distracted. I squirrel a lot back here because I, I'll get in my kitchen and I'll just start doing stuff. What did I do with those nanners? I probably just threw them down somewhere. So, steep your yogi tea or your Gaia tea or your own personal tea baggies. <clears throat> oh, I know what I show you too. And remember, Pinkie Pop. Oops. <laughs> Oopsie. Mm. So Kelly's asking to tell the story of how Tom decided to come to Florida. As I continue, because I want to go back to that. Anyway, because I didn't finish telling you how much of a ninja he is and how rad it is that he's created this new group. If you are going to use social media as your platform, 
You need to get in on his group. I don't even get the inside scoop because he doesn't have the brain juice to explain everything to me. And I get this stuff. I don't have to get it all, but I truly appreciate the power of his. his I'm going to pitch my group. Can I pitch my group? Please do. And then I'm going to tell the story of how you decide to come down. He is so groovy groove. I'm going to cop chop this while you're at it. See? Do you see how I said pitch? Do you see how raw you have to be in 2018? So I'm going to pitch my group to y'all. And it's going to be really, really simple, okay? So if Share this you video. All, Make sure we get those numbers up first. Well, what I could do is I could just stream the same exact video an hour from now and keep doing it and doing it and do it. So yeah, I'm I know, I know how to stream live videos. <laughs> he can do it. But do you see how much fun I like to have, y'all? I can get really, really serious. I've been doing this for 10, 11 years. Um, hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of uh, customer audio testimonials from some of the biggest architects in the world, some of the biggest orthopedic surgeons in the world. I've done it, y'all. And uh, now I just like to, I, I wanted to build myself and everyone else a community. And then when Miss Lana wanted to play with me, I was like, this is cool. So now this is recess. Me right here, rapping with y'all is recess. And hopefully it's fun for you. But I have a skill set that I believe no one has in the world. And it's still fun for me. Okay, it's still fun for me. So I created a group. It's called Rock and Rad Stars. It's the first group that you'll see as you scroll in Radiculously Raw Authentic. And uh, I'm only accepting 30 ninjas. 30 ninjas, y'all. And we have 27 spots left. If I don't get 30, I'm probably not going to do the group. Okay? So it's really just going to be fun for me. And this is what you get. You can do a month or you can do quarterly. So you can spend $300 and just get a month's worth or you can do quarterly for $850. Now check this out. I've, you know, I've been, you know, promoting a little bit and, and here's the thing in marketing you know you'll get you'll get a little bit of pushback and people judging you and say you don't know you don't know this and then when you're like well prove it what, what do you got going on then they don't have anything to say and so when you're marketing self, yourself you're gonna get a lot of people that think that you don't know what you're talking about and the only way you can prove that you know what you're talking about is if you have results which I do okay so 30 ninjas okay $300 a month and what that gets you okay that gets you in the group with 30 other rad ninjas. We might have a CEO of, uh, you know, a lotion company. We might have, you know, uh, a beautiful, um, you know, mother that likes to crochet and has these cool little textile patterns or whatever and needs a, 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 a viral video or a group of her own, whatever it is, um, and to know the algorithms and the techniques on the billing, the invoicing, the consultation, you know, to find out what her competition is, to dissect that competition, to find out, you know, who's doing, who's doing what right and who's doing what wrong in that sub niche right so then they can execute right so you're gonna have 30 of these rad ninjas and then you get two questions and so I'm gonna do a video every single day on everybody's question these these videos can go 15 minutes long but they'll probably go two or three hours long right and I always always over deliver and the stuff that I'm gonna tell you is the stuff that I've honed y'all honed and I've, I haven't read this I've learned it from my own experience I have pushed thresholds I have learned algorithms I've been doing all this other stuff for 10 years y'all I have hundreds and hundreds of audio testimonials where people were paying me fifteen twenty thousand dollars per project now, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I want to continue to build your group, but I also have techniques and mad skills, y'all. Because I got skills, and they're multiplying, and I'm gaining control. It's electrifying. You got to sue the soul. And so I want to help others. Because I see people, I just wish I could poke a hundred people a day be like, hey, ninja flipping this, do this at a certain time, let me help you. Um, but if I'm going to do that, it's going to be a pay. So we've already got three members, $300, y'all, that means you're going to get 30 videos. I'm going to answer your two questions and then everybody else's question. And in the form, it's very lengthy. You know, um, if I get, you know, you know, if I get, if I get 25 right away or 30 right away, you know, and I feel, you know, that maybe someone really isn't there for the right place, you know, and then somebody else feels at the form like, Hey, you know, maybe this person would be better. You know, I want it to be very, very exclusive because the stuff that I'm going to share are the people that have asked me thousands of times in the last 14 months, Tom, how do you do this? What do you do? How do you do that? How do you do that? How do you do this? I'm going to share all of those secrets, all of those secrets. And I'm going to tutor you and help you. I'm not just going to say, here's the information. I'm going to tutor you and help you how to execute. 
okay? Because that's the toughest part. When people say, hey, I'm gonna try this, I'm gonna implement that, and it doesn't work, they give up. I'm gonna be there and I'm gonna be um, your rad ninja. You know, I'm gonna say, well, try this, let's try this, let's try this. Oh, that didn't work, let's try this. That worked, we're gonna keep that formula right here. Let's keep trying more things, let's keep trying more things. So it's gonna be a very exclusive group, and uh, I'm gonna put a lot of energy and a lot of time into it. So if y'all are interested, let me know. And here's another thing that I'm gonna showcase, and I just thought about this, uh, I think early this morning. What I'm gonna do is you're gonna see a lot of me in the next three days, you know why? Because I'm gonna stream the uh, the video that I did about the group, and I, and I thought about this group like four days ago, okay? I took a, a medicinal uh, raw chocolate thing, and I don't do all that stuff, and it just came to me, I'm like, you know what, so many thousands of questions like, how do you do this? How do you do that? How do you make these videos? How do you get, you know, when's the right time to post? You know, how do you do graphic design? Is it mobile responsive? Do you know SEO? Just everything, y'all, everything. Ad dollars, Facebook, Google, I know it all. And so you're gonna see a lot of me in the next few days because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stream that video that I did that I just pushed, play, and played on a lot of different accounts. And so y'all are, are gonna think I'm live, but it's not live. And I could teach you how to do that too. So. That's, a, that's, not a, that's not a shameless plug, that's a rad plug. And this is for anybody, anybody, y'all, okay? Even the MLMers, you know, MLMers that promote their business inside of any of their social profiles are not allowed in the group anymore come February 1st. But if you're an MLMer and you wanna come to my marketing group, you're allowed. I, I will give you advice, but I, in the end, I will probably consult you to get out of that MLM, and I don't care what MLM it is. But you can pitch me, you can give me all of your facts, all of your knowledge about your certain MLM, and we will wrap. We can do it on video. You and I can, okay? We can do a split screen. And so what's gonna happen, if you're, you're part of this group, everybody can go live in the group, right? So now you have 30 Rad Star Ninjas. Do you know the collaborations? You know the business partners that you can get? Do you know you can uh, you know, learn and read from their, from their executions, what has worked from them, what hasn't worked from them? And then you can have all of this digital library full of just straight marketing, marketing ninja content, y'all. So if you want to play, let me know. What, what? Good? Yeah. That was fun, right? I'm, and I love doing that stuff, y'all. I love, love doing that, you know, because it's not, it's not forced. I used to have to do it for all my other clients. You know, now I have this group, so that's, you know, it's playground. But I'm, I'm creating another playground for me, and I can go for days, y'all, about that stuff. Days. And it's, it's not out there. It's stuff that I've created, and uh, it's next level, y'all, I promise. And for what I see, just for what I see on the surface of what he does, I'm serious. You got to learn patience first off. And he, he's just ninja ninja. Like I, I, I'm just like, you know what? I do my thing. You do your thing. We come together and we have this really beautiful sy symbiotic relationship where I allow him to do whatever without having to tell me. Sometimes I'm like, what did you just do? I just noticed something. He's like, what'd you notice? Yeah, or sometimes he's in a space and he's like, I don't have enough brain juice to explain it all. But that's the beauty of the group. Honestly, I want to be listening in on it too because I'll get what I don't get when I want to know. But this is a, a huge gift for anybody who's watched this group grow, especially. Come on, people. It hasn't even been six months. I'm just saying. The fact that it wasn't like you just arrived because you found us, found us. Most of you were sought out after we, you know, like from what I've learned, Tom knows what is, where to look, how to find. He gave me tips on how to do it. He's really, truly the ninja behind the scenes. As much as I've done a lot of work, um, I know the patience level. And so I bow down to anybody who is open to this because this is huge. And I personally think it's worth a lot more than just $300 a month. But that's because I know and see how much time and energy he puts into it. So I see this as a gift. And if you know anybody who could benefit, send them Tom's way, send them to the group, send them to this marketing group. I'm serious. I wish I had access to that. I have paid. I have paid for different... Uh, groups and workshops trying to find ways and niches and this and that and I, I mean seriously y'all I, I, I can't say enough good things about it just because I'm here behind the scenes so I know what's going on but I don't see all of what goes on 
I just know and trust because that's how our relationship was established. We were working together doing all the ninja stuff. <clears throat> he did most of the stuff in the sense of algorithm based. He explained a lot in the beginning, but when he got here, it was like more of him on that side. I, he hands me phones and tells me to do things and I just do them. And how did he end up coming and deciding to come down here? Well, with all of our video messaging and all of our chatting, first off, I speak geek. And so everything he was telling me and what he does right now, that shit gets me excited. Okay, y'all? I'm just going to say, it gets me a little hot under the collar. Because to me, it's kind of sexy. And because that's the realm I came from with my old profession. And it's the meticulousness, the detail, the knowing, the seeing, the, uh, the execution. All of that really was like, ooh, I get this. I know exactly what he's doing. I don't have to know all the details to know it. And it's why I, I resonated so much with what he was wanting to do. And, and it, it just worked with what I would, was also envisioning to do. And I do believe everything happens and unfolds the way it's meant to if you allow it and you're open to it. You just have to just surrender to the process sometimes. So anyway, going on, and we'd have these hot and steamy conversations of like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, here's what we're going to do, and this is what, how we're going to do it. And then and I'm like, ooh, baby, keep talking. Keep speaking geek to me. You know, like I was just playing and rapping at first, and... I, I admit, I did actually share with a couple girlfriends, I said, you know what, I think I have a little crush on Tom. Because we have so much fun. I haven't had this much fun on, with anybody. Like, seriously, fun. Laughing all the time. Belly laughs. I'm like, dude, it's a shame he's not down here. I might have a hard time containing myself. And so it was good that we were apart in the beginning because maybe it, it would have been too distracting. But at one point when he was talking about his apartment lease go, coming up, I was like, oh, all of a sudden something in me just was like, oh, you know, you can always come down here. I've got a house and you're more than welcome to stay with me. And I mean, I saw it as a way to stabilize and keep our situation very, uh, no rent, let's say. And uh, yeah. And so at first, when I, I pitched it to him, see, I had my pitch too, right? My pitch was just simply, you know, I, it's very unlike me. My friends know me. Um, I don't just invite anybody, but, you know, the offer is that if you're interested, you're more than welcome to come down here. And I, I, I don't know why I'm even suggesting it, but just you don't have to answer right now. Now, he immediately kind of went into, no, that's, no, I don't think so, da, da, da. He's got this Kawhi manifestation thing. And there were a couple times in our conversations, I know he was feeling me out because he was like, well, you don't want to go to Hawaii. And I'm like, I have no agenda. Like, truly, I have kind of surrendered my life to whatever unfolds because I found that over the course of my life, the more expectations you have, the more you set yourself up for, for fear, for, for pain and, and, and also disappointment. And who knows? As long as I can travel, I'm a happy person. Within a few days after him going into saying, no, I can't, and he was talking about Hawaii and this and that, and you're talking about selling stuff and doing other things like that, he says, he said a few days later, uh, you know what? I started, I was thinking about it, and I was like, he thought about it. <gasps> and, and it got me even more excited because we were just getting along so well and excited, and then it just really opened up that a little bit more of the intimacy between us and the excitement of getting to know each other in a, on a personal, personal level as opposed to just you and me like this. It was he and I the same way. And I can honestly say that since he's been here, we've had some little struggles. But in all honesty, this is his focus. This group, and it's same for me, we love you so much that this is what we eat, breathe, and sleep is ridiculously authentic. And I'm not kidding when I say that because I go to sleep and we a we have to ask each other, did you did you really get a good night's sleep or were you dreaming about the group? And um, he is just amazing. He'll wake up and he'll just he'll jump on it. He's checking the group. I'm checking the group. Um, yeah, it's it's something special and and I truly highly recommend it. I couldn't speak. I mean, I'm in behind the scenes. All I'm saying is. 
from a professional IT side of the, the, the house, I look at it and go, I would trust him because I know how I was and he's that meticulous and he really does go into places where people don't have the patience nor the knowledge or the courage to open up doors and to, to try things that, you know, like, oh my gosh, if I do that, what if? He just does it. And it's super, it's super awesome to watch for me. Um, he's always learning. And here's the other thing, you're not gonna get this anywhere else. You're not gonna get the knowledge he has because it's not written down. And that's why it's key that if you want this knowledge, you want it actually grow, whatever it is you want to bring to the world, you're gonna have to get it from his, his mouth because it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. I don't even think Facebook knows about it. There's no way. Because it's not talked about. Nobody's doing it. What he's doing, nobody's doing. Trust me on this. Nobody's doing it. So, just saying. You want to make a change in the world? You got to you, you got to put in the work. But this is doing it smarter, not harder. And I tr and I'm telling you, it is doing it smarter and not harder. Because what I felt I was doing last year felt hard. What I feel like I'm doing now, it has its challenges and little bumps. But truly, this is smarter. This is truly smarter. And it's not getting caught up in dogma and rules, but just going with the flow. And if this doesn't work, we turn and we pivot over in this direction. That doesn't work, we go over this way. And you know it's always unfolding and changing anyway. It's social media. And he's keeping up on it so that every day there's something new. And so you want that. You want somebody who's constantly evolving and growing in that area. And that's all I got to say about that, but I'm sure I'll have more pictures in there too because truly, like the butterflies, you got to spread your wings. You got to invest in yourself. Health is in your, your wealth is in your health, <clears throat> but if you really want to inspire people and you want to put yourself out there, it also requires investing in yourself too. You are the biggest investment you'll ever, ever, the biggest investor you'll ever have. And, you know, like, I mean, truly, the fact that he was able to juggle the work that he had with his Arizona Web Kings and do this at the same time, I was spinning my head going, I already know how big this will get. I already feel what's coming. And I know how much work is coming. And I'm like going, I know there's going to be challenges along the way. And that's why my thing is about holding the space and the practice for me. My specialty is working on me and holding and doing what I can to support him. And whether it's in my kitchen or just sitting on the, the yoga mat or stepping out of the house once in a while when I have other things to attend to. He, he's good at what he does. And I respect and honor that. I have a huge respect for that. And I really appreciate it. In case he doesn't hear it often enough. I love this man and appreciate him for all his big hearted glory, because he does have a huge heart. Just saying. Oh, hello. Oh, that's drippy. Not trippy, it's drippy. I made a little bit of a mess. So FYI, I accidentally left my pitcher open like this. And that's why it was over there bubbling and it didn't turn itself off. Whoopsie. So, as a result, this is what happens. Over here, the cabinet got all wet and steamy. <clears throat> well, that gave me an opportunity. See, this is how my mind operates. I'm wiping off the, the water that's steamied up like that, and then I see, look, there's dust on the cabinets. I need to wipe that off, too. That's how I roll, and I get caught up like the squirrel, busy cleaning, and other things get sometimes neglected or put off to the side for a little bit longer. So yeah, I'm constantly cleaning little things. That's just my nature. If I see a need for something to be done, I just do it. It doesn't serve anyone to complain or to push it off to the side and just ignore it. It, it really, if you see a need, just fill it. And that might be what you're trying to figure out. What is your niche? how you're meant to serve in this world, maybe you're still trying to find what it is, right? 
oh my gosh, Kelly, I know. And he's told me when we first started rapping, you have no idea some of the stuff I've protected you from. And I know what he means because he also say he's my gatekeeper. Tom is my gatekeeper. He takes care of me in the sense that he also makes sure that, you know, he, he polices my account so that nobody's harassing me. I'm sure there's tons of messages I've never seen as a result, thankfully. I've seen a few and I wasn't too happy to see what I saw the times I did. But that's the beauty. And when you, you know, like I love saying it takes, it takes teamwork to make the dream work. And if everybody could recognize that relationships are meant to serve one another and not see that you need to change the person to be a certain way, it's amazing that you can actually have so much camaraderie, so much flow, so much phrase. <laughs> Yo, I have to say something too. Basically, I'm a web design, social media marketing consultant, okay? It's very rare that people can even understand everything that it is what I do. And so a lot of the times, if you have a passion, if you have an idea, the best thing to do is literally rap with me for about an hour and a half, right? I'm going to ask you some very in-depth questions. And then if you want to play, you have to hand me your dream and get out of the way so I can become a ninja and do many, 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 many things. So that means if uh, you're a landscaper, you can ninja flip into doing consultations and uh, doing lawn care. If you're a pool guy, you can close clients, 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 and doing the pools, you know, scaling and scaling and scaling while I do everything else. Again, for 10 years, y'all, I've never hired one person, not one person. I've never outsourced anything, okay? Everything has come from these fingers and this mind, and I love it. I love it. I love it just as much as this group, y'all. And it's, uh, it's, it's what I want to do and I want to continue to do it. And um, anybody is welcome, you know. And you don't have to know anything. You just have to trust me and get out the way and then just blossom. And then you won't have a J-O-B because we'll make it fun. We'll make it profitable. And uh, you just get to play, right? What, what? I get to dance with grace and ease and do as I please. And sometimes we drop to our knees in order to find what it is we need. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm feeling a little like chocolate. <laughs> Just because I haven't had any today. Get out of the way. I'm serious. Sometimes it's that's the thing that most people. I think it is it a a niece thick uh, a niece my one of the the uh, teachers that had that quote that our biggest difficulty is getting out of our own way. Our biggest block is us in our own way. So here we have. I'm just gonna leave the door open because you know I'm just gonna take one of these suckers out. There's not a sucker. These are. Good. So, I don't know if y'all saw when I did my video and I made my medicinals. They are bomb diggity, baby. Share this in cannabis groups, y'all. Never know. I do a little bit of everything. Looky, looky. Yummy, yummy. This is the Reese's version. But it's not Reese's. It's Lana's. The alchemy of love in my love lab. Or my love, love, love lab alchemy here. <sighs> but he's so peaceful over there sleeping. He's such a sweetie. He's got the sun shining on him. It's so sweet to look at. He's like a little puppy baby just with his head. He has one of the most loving environments here. In fact, his food is supposed to arrive today. I don't see any packages up front, but the postman is outside. So, I have to really just smell it, look at it gazingly, lovingly, with appreciation, gratitude. You know, just it's a simple little process that when you consume something, whether it's a drink or food or just indulgent in something that you really enjoy, you should really take the time to appreciate it, to be with it, to just open up the space, the heart space. 
<sighs> to breathe it in. <sighs> because it's the sensuality of food that really enlivens the richness of your life. I can't hear it. That's probably the only thing I can't do with it right now, is hear. Or maybe I can. I will hear it after I've taken it, I and mean, it kicks in after a while. <sighs> so sometimes I get these little spots of trying to breathe fully, which is why I stress so much the importance of breathing, being mindful of your breath because I get excited or maybe I get see this is a pendulum swinging for me and right now I have a little little bit of a catch of the breath ah and so now there it goes so if I get really overly excited or if I'm a little nervous or anxious I know that's a that's a key for me to not just shovel food into my mouth because when I do do that I lose the experience because I'm not present fully within it so I try to really take the time <sighs> smell it look at it gazingly lovingly just really allow myself to take it all in I can taste it and touch it because I'm already touching it and I like to eat in small bites because I want it to to feel that first flavor right Mm. And just allowing it to melt on my tongue. How do you eat your chocolates, people? Do you like chocolate as much as I do? Medicinal's even better. I love my molds. They make up some really pretty chocolates. I want to see if you have... <laughs> I put them back in the fridge. They're so good, too. They're very, very good. Hey, did you? Oh, cool. You put... I, I didn't close them because I'm still chopping up stuff, but... That's cool. I like those that. those colors gorgeous? Yeah. That's going to add uh, a different... Uh, just a slight different taste, right? I had put onions in them before. Are you going to... So how? what's the deal with the what what sauce? Because you had, you had that little sauce that you I were putting I need tahini top. to make up the Jeez. cheesy sauce to make up the what what sauce. So it, one sauce requires the other. Hey, Heather, honey, how are you feeling? How's your foot? You yeah, broke your uh, ankle doing a love spin boom, or was it no, a, you ninja flipped? She, no, she was just she was just uh, being mobile, and she just tripped and, and broke her leg. Everybody, friend, follow, uh, and support uh, Heather, y'all. Heather, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Heather White Belka, I went to school with her growing up up in Maine. And she's a sweetheart. I love you, honey. She said ninja flipped. LOL. Right. Y'all, and also, we're giving away the uh, the free 14-day Optimal Reset Challenge. We have like over 100 people on that now, just in a couple of days. And uh, if you want to transition uh, to a healthier lifestyle, in my opinion, it is amazing. You just you just have to fill out the form, and then you instantly get it. And uh, I always think uh, Saturday is the best day to start anything. Everybody always says Monday. I don't know. I like to start things on Saturday, don't you? I'll start them whenever. Whenever, yeah. I guess any time's a good time, right? You and then think if you, of it, just do it. Yeah, if you can get through that, y'all, I'm telling you, you can ninja flip in the 12-week meal plan, or you know what you could do? You could just keep redoing the 14-day optimal reset, right? Mm -hmm. And the most powerful thing about all of this, do you have any, anything else to wrap about? Of course, I can always come okay. up with something. Y'all want Lana to keep going? She's next level. She, just, just, just keep playing with her, and she'll just tell you something like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you could do that. But um, with the 14-day optimal reset, you can just keep doing it over and 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 over, and over right? And and you, by um, inspiring yourself, because you have to do it for yourself, you will see the gradual um, uh, improvement you will make in two, three, four, five, six, seven days. And then you can ninja flip into the group, create a post. I mean, beautiful Miss um, Ella has lost 33 pounds, I think, in oh 44 gosh. days. You know what I'm saying? That's I mean, it's meal huge. Plan. Yeah, and the most important thing is about all of this is you could have, you could be in Oprah's group, you could be in Christina Foley Raw's group, you could be in Banana Freely's group, you can be in Dr. Axe's group, you can be in David Avocado's Wolf's group, you could be in anybody's group, Oprah's group, you could be in all of these groups, y'all, but 
there's nothing like this group because it literally is a support foundation. There's many, many people that are for addiction, uh, drug addiction, abuse, mental abuse, right? Um, alcoholism, you know, sex addiction, right? Um, all sorts of stuff, just stuff that's really, really hard to get through in life, you know, because life ain't easy. And when you have this group that is true, when we try to eliminate all the spam, all the bots, all the MLMers where you can come here and feel safe, it is huge because we get hundreds of messages every 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 day, testimonials every day, and it's so important um, to have a support group like this. And so, if you're doing the 14 day optimal reset, and you know, and you're and you chugging that water every morning, chugging that water in the afternoon, you know, and you're and you're having bladder issues, and then you flip into the group, you know, say, hey, I'm having a bladder issue. You know, what do you think? You're gonna have you know hundreds of comments in there giving you advice. You know what I'm saying? Or, you know, if you have allergic reaction uh, to maybe one of the hummus recipes or maybe something that, you know, was in the smoothie. Hey, I'm, ha I'm getting a rash on the back of my neck. What do you all think? Boom, boom, boom. A lot of people that are influencers or want to create a, create a group, they just want to make a buck. We have paid services, but we are here. The group is here for you. There's been a lot of people that launch a group and there's like 500 people and they have people typing their stuff. The people that created the group, they have like little bots that type their stuff. They're not even real. Same thing with their Twitter or their Instagram. It's not even them. It's like an assistant or you know uh, their general manager or something. This is next level. And when I tell you, we're going to have 10 million people. <laughs> Mark my word. Mark Miss Lana's word. We are here. There will be 10 million people, right? When there was like 10,000 people, they're like, Tom, you're doing this it? wrong. You're doing that wrong. You need to do this. Well, you know what? I didn't listen to you. I, I maybe will take some feedback. But if I would have listened to any of you all that told me, you know, this, 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 and I need to do that, we wouldn't be here today, right? Just think if we have 10 million rock and rad stars and you have, and you can't poop, right? You cannot poop. You've tried everything. You need to drop a giant deuce. You go into there. You need to flip. I need to drop a deuce. I'm eating this. I'm eating that. What natural remedy do you think? When we have 10 million rock and rap stars, you will get tens of thousands of comments for free. It's amazing. I know I wanted something like this and that's why we built it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and this is how we roll. Booyah. What, what? And we're almost up to four hours. You know that, right? Just in case you hadn't noticed, I just looked back at the clock. So I know I started about noon, right? So four o'clock rolls around, we're gonna be done. But I know Tom's probably getting hungry even if he didn't say it. And he has, the doggy hasn't moved yet. So that's a good sign. So then fortunately, the way I was cutting this was using the knife I had to throw away the other day. And I don't really like to use the metal because the metal messes with fermentations. Thank you, Kelly. And I was reading your comment earlier, Kelly, about the emotional eating. And that right there, when you recognize emotional eating, that in itself is huge. Most people don't see that why they eat certain foods is related to their emotions. The reason even I see it in myself, why am I reaching for certain foods? Well, let me think about it. Am I really hungry? You have to sit with yourself and go, am I really, really hungry? Most of the times all you have to do is drink a little bit of water. We don't hydrate enough. And if you're not hydrating enough and all you're doing is putting food in your body, how do you think your body's gonna hydrate? The food's not always gonna be hydrating, especially during the winter time and you're eating cooked foods and that's not hydrating foods either. Either or either. So for example, I could easily have a craving for something doesn't mean that's what my body needs, but it could be where my mind is being triggered by something that is creating the comfort food reaction, wanting that particular type of food. I know some of my comfort foods growing up, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yummy! I'm serious because I love, love, loved peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. When I was a runner, I would grab a tablespoon and I would just take spoons of peanut butter before I'd go on a run just to give myself what I thought was a healthy fuel because back then my idea based on the information that I was provided and I saw I didn't I didn't necessarily know it at the time it wasn't the truth of my body but my idea was oh I must need protein because I'm get, I'm craving peanut butter but that wasn't necessarily the case 
Now I have to actually sit and go, okay, if I'm craving something, what is it really that I need? If I'm feeling like I need something more salt, probably means that I need more, more um, potassium and magnesium. Grab yourself some, some celery, right? I can't do the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches anymore because I'm allergic to gluten, but you, I've created, and if y'all have seen some of the recipes I've come up with, I created, I think it might even be in the meal plan, um, the peanut butter and jelly smoothie, OMG y'all, but you have to have those special grapes. Um, which grapes were they? They weren't the cotton candy grapes. They were the, there was another type of grape and oh my God, they were so freaking amazing. Literally the smoothie was like peanut butter and jelly, but it was with almond butter. That right there. And I don't know, I might've made it when Tom arrived because I might've had some of those tomatoes still. Or not tomatoes, grapes. Listen to me. Tomatoes, grapes, ah, they're not the same. <laughs> so... Yeah, it's, it's key in just recognizing when you have a craving, whether it's coming from the head or the body, and it's huge. And it's a huge eye-opener as to whether or not you're facing those, those triggers and confronting them and allowing yourself to sit with them fully. Because you know you can't heal anything unless you sit with, with it and let it come through. <clears throat> Suppressing things just creates more pressure, right? So pressure, pressing. This is the thing I love about words is what you don't realize is you, your words can tell you so much more about where you're at as well. I am like chopping this pretty beautiful cabbage up. You know I love purple. Look at that design. It's so gorgeous, isn't it? This is nature. It's so amazing. Ugh. In itself, it's just, you take a picture of just that, and you've got art. You know, put that on your, your wall. Van Gogh, what? Your own creature creating. You know, and that's how we're all inspired by nature. We just, a lot of times, we don't even recognize it or give it credit, do we? You see a beautiful sunset. What is that in inspire within you what does that breathe into you the spirit breathing in yeah nature's picasso so yeah if you did, haven't hadn't tuned in earlier i was basically sharing <laughs> huge recipes i've been working on i'm probably going to take this coconut cheese and make some flavors up a little bit later i have a whole lot of cabbage to cut up and this is gonna go. I'm not sure if that's clean enough. So this is gonna go inside the, cat, the kimchi container because I've got all that space and it's it's crying out, fill me up, baby. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll use the knife to push it down. So look at that. Look at how beautiful those colors are. Underneath that has leeks and there's leeks in there. There's garlic. There's, uh, what did I say, ginger in there as well. This, was, this one is going to need more water. Definitely put in lots of cayenne. Lots of cayenne. Cayenne's rocks. I love cayenne. In fact, I need to put cayenne in the other one. I don't think I did that. Oh, no, I did do that. You gotta be careful with me. Sometimes I'm like going, oh, I'll just throw more stuff in. <laughs> the humor in my life. Hmm. So I'm drinking a yogi tea because it's nice for opening up the bronchial path. But what I've been taking for the past week is this stuff. Where is it? There it is. This stuff tastes really good too. It's got a whole, it's extra strength, extreme immune support, immune support, extra strength, ACF. Buried treasure. Let me tell you, I was at, at the local nature's food patch and a couple ladies, I was helping them. We were helping each other, basically. They were looking for something for the skin, and I said, helichrysum, blah, blah, blah. 
And then I asked them, what do you do about the colds? And she's, this woman recommended the stuff. And it's jam-packed with some serious herbs, like healing herbs. Mmm. 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 I like the flavor so much. I actually tried to move it around in my mouth because it tastes so good. And uh, <clears throat> it's just really yummy, that's all I'm saying. So I've been taking it like several hours, every several hours I break it up just so I can hopefully heal it quicker. And this morning I, I definitely felt a shift in feeling much better. Um, it, every time I think I'm done, there's just a little bit more of a of sinus drainage or just a tickle of the throat which is from the sinus draining down the back of the throat yeah I don't normally have these these ailments that's all I'm gonna say but you know I was doing a whole lot you know Tom and I first when he first got here it was a lot of you know adjusting learning our our each other's routines trying not to project our own personal expectations upon one another and what we knew the other person see the thing is is we haven't known each other that long and we've grown so much in the short time he's been here together like truly like okay we have some people have their little baby heart attacks and other people have their meltdowns and blow ups but you know what if you don't have that how can you grow we're all in different places and when you accept somebody where they're at and give them their space to be they'll grow so much easier and quicker and hey if you prepare something for someone with love and tender care and you plate it up really, really nice, and you give it to them, and they still want to put a little extra seasoning on it, or a little salt, just let them. I do try to encourage that he try it before, and he's good about that. He doesn't like when you tell him anything to do, because there's a little hidden trigger in there that makes him feel like some authority figure is still trying to get him to do shit that he doesn't want to do and that causes resistance and it bubbles up and he's like you can't tell me what to do don't tell me what to do serious resistance and I get it because I was like that seriously I get it that's why I have compassion for it and I'm like okay hold space walk away it's okay you don't have to deal with it right now just let him go through his little, little tantrum who is he talking about <laughs> and did she say S-H-I-T? <laughs> I think we got Miss Lana to curse. <laughs> he no. knows how much I love him, though. That's the beauty. I've always, always not listened to rules. And he rebels. I get it. But that's how I learn. How do you not learn unless you break all the rules? Right? And those rules, I, we have to call them rules in the group. They're just guidelines. Yes. But... How are you not gonna learn unless you break every single rule, right? I'm trying to I'm trying to learn, unlearn, unlearn, unlearn everything you think you know. And then question everything you think you know. Yeah. Lana's favorite word is curiosity. Watch out. She's like, I'm curious. You're like, oh boy. <laughs> Actually that is true. Are you gonna do what I think you're doing? You've just got that squat going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's not SBD or face melting. Truly, Kelly, it's true. I, I agree with that. We, we, we are definitely healing stuff on both levels, and it's beautiful. He holds space for me in times when I've never had someone be there for me like the way he has. And I truly appreciate that. And we do try to be mindful and remind each other how much we love each other and we appreciate what the other one does. Even if we have a grumpy moment, we always come back. 
Even if he doesn't want to hug me because he's just not in the space to hug. Wait a minute. I haven't gotten a hug. I'm not going to force it on you. Don't worry. Yeah. Don't force anybody to give you a hug. But also recognize, here's my side of this. this. If you really love someone and you're resistant to doing something they ask, ask yourself if it's coming from here or from here. Because if you resist it, then it could be that you're just fighting with your ego, not with your heart, where your heart will say, why not? It's not going to hurt anything. It's not going to harm anything to, you know, why is it I don't want to do that? It's something that we have to look within ourselves. Because if someone asked you to do something that is no sweat off your back, but you just feel like, I don't want to, that shit come from the head. And that's a serious, true ego issue. And that's when you want to be right versus happy. She cursed again. I did. I said the S word. It's the poopy stuff that comes out of your butt hole. <laughs> hey, how many of those chocolates did she eat? Are you lying like a rug? No, I told you the truth. You know that. No one gets that joke. Are you lying like a rug? What, what? No. Down, down, down. I still didn't get my hood, but it's okay. <laughs> ah, butterflies are spreading their wings. Oh, baby! <laughs> Oh yeah, there we go. Crack in the back. Crack in the back. <laughs> Drop it like it's hot. <laughs> and yes, we laugh our butts off like this all the time. This is the real stuff here, baby. Hey, listen to this. I get her to speak Italian to me. Mm. I have no idea what she says. Go. Abbraccio mi amore mio, io sento così buoni, oh, sono molto contento nel tuo abbracci. That's right. Mm -hmm. What else? Mm, stringimi, perché mi piace sentirti molto veloce, voglio sentire come uno, numero uno, insieme nel cuore tuo, nel cuore, il cuore mio. Yes, please. What else? Uh, <laughs> uh, anche quando sto parlando in italiano, ti piace? Guaramuzze, guaramuzze, Buonissimo. Bravo, bello mio. Bravo. Ura la. Baila con me. Baila con me. Dimmi bene, ti voglio bene. Ti amo, amore, ti amo. Sta ballando con me ancora. Fai l'amore con me. Somebody who understands this is probably laughing their butt off. <laughs> Let me tell you the proper way to do a guanamoze. You gotta grab it. You gotta get it up. Yeah. Not just guanamoze. You gotta go. You gotta mean it. Eat guanamoze. 250 calories. Prendeme. Con la mano. Un guanda in mano. In mano su faccia. Su la faccia tua. Faccia mia. Mwah. What, what? <laughs> Kelly, I love you. She says I'm going to pee myself. <laughs> Especially, they say, capisci quando parlo in italiano è più buff buffo the, the side. Veramente. It's hilarious. If you understand what I just said in Italian, some of it was pretty damn funny. <clears throat> but I was being sweet too. <laughs> we do. Again, like I said, 
fun. We have fun every day, all day. Even sometimes when it doesn't seem like it's that fun, it's fun. My favorite are the belly laughs. We definitely have those daily. You gotta find people that match your cray cray. Haven't y'all noticed over the course of time, for those of you who've been following us for a while, hasn't Tom, like, you see the differences? I know in myself, too. I mean, I've had friends of mine say, Lana, I can totally see a difference in you in the time that you, you know, well, especially since Tom's been here, but, you know, we don't see our own stuff most often. People will see things from the outside, just like, how can I see my own stuff if I don't see it in somebody else, too? That's another thing to consider. So, yeah, we all show up to one another where we're at, and people will show up in our lives to reflect the healed and unhealed parts of us. And that's a blessing. It's, all, it's always going to be a blessing. It's just whether or not you recognize the blessing in the moment. A lot of times I've found over the course of years of experience, and, and when I've, uh, especially when I lived in Naples, Italy, um, thank you, Heather. Yeah, I, I actually had a, a woman at the studio said they could totally see it in both of us. Um, and it really, it, it kind of lit up my heart because I didn't ask for the, ref the the comment, but it was just really, really sweet and well-meaning from somebody I admire and is a mentor of my own. I think mentors are important, but you always want to choose a mentor, somebody who is successful and has something for that you like has knowledge you don't have you can never have a good a mentor or somebody to look up to if they're at the same level as you or below you so yeah it's very important to surround yourself with people who are going to inspire you and you're going to learn from right that's sweet thank you so much Carl I agree totally We'll share more over time. We're still we still got our stuff that we're we're definitely both working on. And it's a beauty and it's 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 I just am grateful every single day that I get to wake up and have this much fun with that man. I'm serious, like I I I don't think I need anything else for the rest of my life. It just keeps going like this. Like our thing is is we had a lot of fun today, didn't we? Did you have, I had a lot of fun playing with you today. Like, truly, we're like that in the end of the evening. Sometimes he falls asleep a little earlier. Sometimes I fall asleep a little earlier. But, you know, we're right there next to each other. There's this whole thing about placing a hand on a butt thing going on. <laughs> Assuming the baboofas don't blow you away and melt you away. Melt your face. <laughs> OMG, no seriously, it just was funnier because I was sharing how my sisters and I used to joke about that song by the Cranberries, you know, why'd you have to let it linger, why'd you have to, why'd you have to let it linger, we were really talking about baboofas. Heather, the, they're, you know what, it's all in the plan, and it's a big vision. And, uh, yeah, when it happens, it will happen. We're just not, we're not attached to the when. One thing I've learned is don't be attached to how it's supposed to look or unfold for you. Because when it does, it's going to be bigger and better than you could ever have imagined. So when it happens, you'll know. It's just a matter of the when. I've been to Hawaii. Hawaii is absolutely gorgeous. I've not been to any of the other islands other than the, the island of Oahu. <clears throat> I do remember when I was stationed in uh, Korea years ago that uh, I had a mid-tour in Hawaii and I got to visit, I think I was there for two weeks because we, we used to get like three, 30 days of a mid-tour, but I only took two weeks. And I did a, a military hop. I went through Okinawa. And I stayed with one of the women I went to. We were not only in basic training together, but we were also in tech school. 
for computer systems. And her and her husband were stationed in Hawaii, so I went down and I just hung out with her for a couple weeks. And I went out, you know, like with some friends that she introduced me to and things like that. I was in my somewhat destructive and stupid phases back then. Um, wasn't really dating anybody, just being, just doing stupid things and drinking back in those days. Um, I went to my first luau out there, which was beautiful. And I can tell you that pig roast thing was delicious. I can't imagine what it does to the body now thinking about it, but it was, it, it's just an experience I had and it was yummy. I'll give it that. But you know, that's the thing. It, what I found over the years when I changed my diet personally, that things I thought tasted good back in the day, when I try them again, tried them over this course of time when I was transitioning and also just, I'd come out of it and I'd taste something like when I had pizza. <clears throat> when I first found out I was allergic to gluten, I was going to this woman who did the cell, um, what do they call that? They look at your, your blood cells and they can see if you have parasites, they can see if you have certain afflictions and this and that. And I had already learned that I had the, the, the reaction to the gluten so this woman, a live cell blood and live blood cell analysis is what it's called. And this woman, she looked at my stuff and she was like, "Here, you can take this pre-enzyme stuff and it's supposed to keep you from having the reaction to the gluten." I'm sorry, y'all. That stuff just doesn't happen. It doesn't exist. Uh, if you're allergic to something, you just need to cut it out of your diet. And your body's telling you because inflammation happens as a result of of something foreign introduced to your body that you shouldn't be ingesting. That has been what I learned for me. You can keep on ingesting it. I can eat whatever I want, but that doesn't mean I'm going to feel good about it. Literally, physically, emotionally, because food also, again, will change your mood. It will adjust according, you know, you're, you're going to, what you put in your mouth and goes in your belly, it comes out, it's, it becomes you. You are what you eat, literally. So if you're ingesting an animal that was beaten, you're gonna take on that energy of the fight or flight. You're gonna be that much more in, in that state. Because animals do know they're coming to their end. Um, and these were things I didn't think about back then, by the way. I liked my meat, I loved my steak, my filet mignon with, with butter, real butter. I'm not gonna lie, I love the flavors. But, you know, am I going to eat it again? I don't know. And I never say never because guess what my mantra was for years. I'm never giving up my filet mignon, my real butter. What I learned was, wow, the universe only hears the part I'm giving up. It doesn't hear the don't. So for those of you who haven't, haven't figured it out and you're going through life wondering why everything you don't want is showing up in your life, well, why are you focusing on the don't want this? When you say don't something, do you know you're putting it out to the universe that the don't doesn't exist? It's the attention to what it is that, that follows the don't. And the universe is noticing that you're fixated on it. So if you feel so resistant to giving something up and saying in your subconscious or your conscious or your unconscious, and you're like resisting ever having to give that up, like don't threaten that. Right? That's what the addiction is. That is telling you, telling the universe, bring more of that to me. That's why we keep re-experiencing the same things over and over again in our lives. Because our fixation is strictly on that. That's why it's important to really become mindful and aware of where your mind is at all times. Because then you can see that your life is showing up to you exactly where your mind is. Your mind is creating it all the time. You can deny it, but if you start getting more mindful and put it into practice and attention to it, you're going to see how it really is happening. And nobody knows but you. So when it shows up in your own life, all you can turn around and go, oh shoot, I was just thinking how much I dislike that. And guess what? It just showed up again. Right? <coughs> My dad watches all the ancient alien stuff. Um, I don't get distracted by it because I feel like we're all aliens anyway. I mean, alien, it just means it's foreign. 
It's no, you know, you and me, them, the, so much. <laughs> so funny. Funny! We like to laugh, it's funny. Mm. So my postman went by, there's no mail. But since Amazon delivers, it could arrive later, which is the raddest, coolest thing ever. We love Amazon. Okay, so now, if you can't see, I know I need to bring this closer, don't I? Let's see if I can pull this over here. Ooh, look at the gorgeous colors. Let's see if I can do it this way. I'll try to put as much as I can in this one. Oops. I know this one needs to be pushed down more because it has so much liquid in it. So this can definitely go in more. The other one's going to need more liquid. Awesome. <clears throat> and it really does... <laughs> You want to make sure you have clean utensils. I haven't licked my knife, if you hadn't noticed. Um, I normally do. I'm going to add some more water to the top of that just to top it off. Because I know it's going to be very beneficial and helpful. This other one over here. I'm going to put the rest of the, kimchi, the cabbage in that one. Because I am still rapping and talking and doing and, you know, this is the beauty is I get to talk to y'all. I'm kind of like feeling like I've got company in the kitchen with me, which is fun. Because otherwise I just spend all this time in here and I'll, I'll listen to mantra. I'll turn on some mantra in the kitchen. Because I like to listen to something to alter my, my mind and bring it into a positive state and increase the, the good vibes in the kitchen. I love to listen to Japji, which is basically, um, it's a story. It's like a poem. And even if you don't understand words, the key is, is noticing that what you're really doing is just increasing a vibration because words, it's all energy, right? Oh, I can't read what you wrote there, Carl, just yet. I'm going to have to look back through the comments. Now... What I can do, oh, all right, I gotta do more water. Because I said I need to add more water to the kimchi, I'm gonna add it to this hot water because the warmer the water actually helps. No, cold, it doesn't matter if it's warm or cold. So what I'm gonna do is top off the water. Vasa, lots of vasa. And so there's that one, and then this one here. I'm gonna put more of these pepper flakes, flakes of red papa. Fafa, I love saying fafa the German way. I know, I'm getting hungry too. It won't be long before I'm running to the bathroom next too because I gotta pee, speaking of, I'm gonna pee myself. Aww, I'm serious. Peace, love, and serenity does keep the world going and we have to start with ourselves. So I don't measure much, if y'all notice that. If you ever you watching me, ever watching me, you notice I don't measure very much. I just start pouring the flakes in. I like it spicy. And you can also add, I have carrots in, oh no, I ran out of carrots the other day. You can put carrots in here, you can put celery in here. Um, I should have put some celery, huh? How much more time do you think we have on this video? Don't tell me, unfortunately. Y'all have to tell me. How long have I been going? I know I'm coming up on the four hours because it's almost four o'clock. As soon as we hit four hours, it, it's going to shut me off anyway. I do have celery along with this beautiful little turkey back there. So pretty, so sweet. And... I know, right? So I got like four stalks of celery the other day. I know what I'm craving is a celery soup, a cream celery soup. So I'll probably do that. Um, 
Tom's been craving a lot more cooked foods lately, which is kind of cool because I don't usually eat cooked foods very often, uh, except for during the colder months. And he's been whipping up some food that I get to partake in that he's made. It's been yummy. Unfortunately, we don't have the wet, wet sauce anymore, so he's he's kind of like his SOL in having wet, wet sauce on all this stuff. But I can still put something together for him as best I can. So we got four stalks of celery. I know I'm going to probably use at least one of these. I know, right, Heather? So I went to Sanwa with my dad the other day. And they had this on sale. I don't remember how much. I think like just, I think it's like five bucks or something. No, it had to be less than that because it was less, it was around a dollar a piece even. So maybe three something under four for four of them. And this is last night's, oh my gosh. That's the leftover of the, the SCOBY that I need to spread out on another dehydrator sheet. So when I'm done with all of this, I'm going to spread that out and, and make another leather. So those of you who were kind of just tuning in, didn't see it earlier, in the beginning I was showing SCOBY jerky, fruit leather. This one is basically the, um, I took the SCOBY from my kombucha, the coffee kombucha. I took the SCOBY, I whipped it up in the blender, and I added cacao, uh, raw, ca 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 la la la, raw cacao powder, Chia seeds, bananas, butterscotch toffee, vanilla stevia, and a little bit, I think I put a little almond um, flavor extract. And I whipped it up and super yum. They turned out really, really good. I'm gonna do some celery in both of these. I'll tell you just to dry those up was a good 13 hours or so. Oh, wow. Mm. Celery. Celery is super good for you. It's even, is it really extra beneficial for men? Maybe even... So what I'll do is I'll just take like a couple stalks and chop them up. They probably won't fit all in one, but just enough. I just rinse them off, any dirt that might be on them. I prefer to wipe them down because the water is not the greatest over here. Ooh, you got a juicer for Christmas? Celery juice is supposed to be so healing, honey. And especially for broken bones, like like all that, just increasing your, your intake of fruits and vegetables is going to help speed it up to knit back the bone back together. Let me see here. I'll take these off. You know what? We haven't juiced since Tom's been here, believe it or not. Not complaining because I need so much, but come this spring, we'll probably juice more. Because then the markets will have all sorts of goodies. And we get the fresh produce. Heck, we're going to need another refrigerator at that rate. I can tell you one thing I learned when I did the four hour lives before. A sword fight, yeah, I know. Wah! Hmm. Buddy, buddy's like. I like to check in on him, see how he's doing over there. So back to the knife and some cutting action. Hey, Devon, honey. Girlfriend, we need to get together. How do they look? <laughs> mm. 
some chewing on the celery. Mm. See, that's what I'm going to need because I am craving a little bit of salt. And what I like to use when I crave salt really is seaweed if I can. I know, right? So Devon is my, my, my bestie, with, especially in the yoga community. She's amazing. Um, and she's got a, a skill with doing eyebrows and eyelashes. She makes me look all pretty. She re-highlights all of what seems to die out. Like, it's so crazy. As you get older, the, um, the color pigmentation in your eyebrows and your eyelashes kind of lighten so much that they, if you were used to having bushy, nice, full eyebrows, which I used to have really nice eyebrows and I had really nice lashes. And as I've gotten older, I'm like going, what's going on here? Well, then all of a sudden it's like, here, let's color them. OMG, I was just putting mascara on, you can see. where. Why does it look like I have no eyelashes until I put mascara on and it's all of a sudden they're there? It's like, oh, they are there. So this is gonna go in my kimchi. I wish I had some more carrot. I do have parsnips and I forgot about the parsnips. The parsnips in the, in the uh, kimchi is really good too. I'm serious. There's a lot of love that goes in on all my food. This is probably this is probably one of my longest videos, definitely now. If we're gonna hit the four hour mark on this video, it's because I just love to share what I'm doing in the kitchen. Although, like I said, food is gonna have to be prepared here shortly because some of us, our bellies are grumbling. I haven't really eaten anything except for all the nibbling stuff that you see me nibbling on. Devon, I gotta show you my chocolates. I made chocolates. You know what kind I mean, too. The good ones. Devon's actually partaken in some of my chocolates. These are... This is, the, this is the stash in the freezer. Aren't those yummy? Look how pretty those molds are. So the ones that look like little Reese's Pieces cup, right? You know I'll bring you some. The hearts with the hearts inside of them, aren't they so pretty? Are you coming in for a chocolate? After 7 p.m. <laughs> I love that he, he has like a time window. He's like, not until after I've caught up on work. He is the ninja with his awesome, awesome jacket. Hello, Devon. What, what? I've never met Devon, have I? No, you haven't. She said the best and most beautiful chocolates. Oh, honey. Do you know I get coffee kombucha for us with chocolate, too? When I come over, I'll bring the booch and I'll bring the chocolates. Hey, I had an idea. So, you know, on, on our page, which y'all are on right now, I think we have like 30 or 40 reviews. When, when Lana's done wrapping with this beautiful, uh, she's so intricate on just cutting her celery. But when this video is over, go back to the page and give us a review. Give us a one star if you only think we're worth one star. Give us two stars, three stars, four stars, five stars. We have five minutes left. Um, give us five stars and um, in the review, um, it would be really, really rad if you could just express you know, what, the, what the group means to you. Um, if you've uh, found a friend that lives in Tennessee, um, if you've uh, met up with a friend, you know, and had a picnic together, or if you, you know, really like Buddy, or if you like Iggy, or if you really love Lana, whatever What's it is. What's brought the most value to your yeah. life from the group? Yeah, give us a review. That would be super rad. And then um, if you all are on YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Miss Lana will not be going live today for her 40-day yoga challenge. I think you're on day eight or day nine. Is it day nine? Uh, it would be tomorrow. Nine. Day, I think it's day nine. She'll be um, streaming tomorrow at uh, 5 p.m. And look at y'all. I haven't really gotten into the kundalini yoga like I want to. She keeps sending me cool things and she's letting me go at my pace. But she's going 40 days, y'all. 40 days. And it's amazing. And she goes sometimes, you know, 20 minutes to an hour. Just watch one of the videos and you will be like, whoa. Just watch in depth. And, uh, you know, don't touch the screen. Don't do any of that. Literally put the phone down and just listen and try to do those movements, right? Because it is, it's life changing, y'all. So um, definitely don't miss any of those. We've got, uh, 
Wow, that's so cool. We got three and a half minutes. I'm going to do a love spin boom, and Miss Lana will gracefully say goodbye to you. And um, if you have not introduced yourself in the group, Ninja Flip over there right now. Tell us what your favorite color is. Tell us what makes you pee a little. Tell us what your favorite dessert is. Tell us why you think harvesting self-love and not giving up on yourself is really important. And uh, Ninja Flip outside and go play. I need to take that advice because I haven't been outside in a while. But I'm going to give you a love spin boom, and then you can give it away. I love you all. Bye-bye. Hmm, what, what? So we're down to our last three minutes. And I can't express enough how much you all mean to me. Thank you so much for sharing and showing up and just just really devoting and dedicating and being you because you be you. The courage comes for you from you showing up for you first and then you're more available for those that you love and you care about. And if you truly love, your, you love yourself, you can truly love others. It really opens you up to the richness and the fullness of life when you work on the inside and then you radiate it out because everything in your life is showing up where you're at, right? And I love this one, Devon and I agree. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. That's a, that's a huge key. If you don't know what that means, look at what you do and ask yourself, how does that reflect in your life and how you show up for yourself? You can say one thing, but are you in alignment and integrity with that? And so this is just, just part of the 40-day Rad Kundalini Yoga training uh, videos that I've been doing, the challenge. It's, it's all time for you to go within, journal, 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 journal. Let me know in the video comments how it's working out for you. What are you experiencing? What epiphanies are you having? Um, if you're, again, I'm going to pitch Tom and his marketing group because truly that in itself is huge. If you are using social media as your business platform, there are things that, that have changed. It's Facebook Armageddon and you want to get in and make your changes as necessary now because you want to do it smarter, not harder. The longer you put it off, the more difficult it's going to be. And that's one thing I'm grateful where I teamed up with Tom because he said in the beginning, much of what's already unfolded and been happening this entire time. Uh, just the other day, it was, remember what I said? It was, honey, I remember when you said that that was going to happen way back when. And so you just sometimes have to hold the faith and the trust and the knowing of your own vision that it's really going to come to fruition. When it's really that strong within you and you know it, you have to trust it and you have to take a leap of faith and you got to push beyond your comfort zones and belief systems and expectations and experiences because that's how life is going to show up to you. So I love you all. Time for my love spin boom. Everybody breathe together. <sighs> Boom! Keep it raw, stay rad. You know I love you. What, what?